Journeys is sponsored by the Horseman's Benevolent and Protective Association of Ontario, which represents thoroughbred owners and trainers and their hardworking employees at Woodbine and Fort Erie racetracks. The HPPA represents horse people's interests in all issues pertaining to thoroughbred racing. The HPPA's goal is for the betterment of racing at all levels, from medical and pension plans to negotiating with government and racetrack operators. Your HBPA is at the forefront of all issues important to members. Please visit the HBPA at hbpa.on.ca or on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you, HBPA Ontario. Away Together is all about enhancing the guest experience from the hotel to exploring everything the destination has to offer. Away Together brings the culture and the history of a location alive to the traveler who is seeking to immerse themselves in a truly authentic local experience while on vacation. The next race day at the Garson Savannah will be the 30th of March. Bring your family and enjoy a day of races. Hello. Good evening. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, Buff. Are you Buff? Leroy, are you Buff? (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm representing the, the, the Colorado um, college team oh, with, okay. with, 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 with Coach Deion Sanders. Prime time. I used Prime to follow him. time. Yeah, I used to follow him for a long, long time. So, um, Buffed. yeah. You got the hat, you... you got the shirt, you're all matching yeah. there. Yeah, yeah wow. I got it, man. So, I, if the buff shows that I'm a little buff too here, that's all right. Oh, boy. I got a fill out Sean shirt. I got a fill out Sean shirt for him with a little bit of this buffness. I'm off. I'm off. Off, not buff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that being said, guys, how you guys been? Everything's good, man. I'm in the tropics. Good. I'm happy. <laughs> You're in the tropics. Okay. Well, yeah. there you go, rub, well, rubbing that in Jen's face again, eh? Uh, yeah, yeah. You we're, know, we're, you... we're getting there. It's not exactly tropics, but I did something on Monday morning for the whole morning that I haven't done in ooh, 30 years. What's that? Back, back on the end of the shank and walking hot. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I see oh. I see you posting those things. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how did that happen? How did that happen? Uh, my girlfriend who trains horses there, Renee Kieran's, um, I had I must have been drinking when I said it, but I had mentioned to her one day, hey, I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, walking hot again one day, you know. And uh, then she asked me to come in on Monday morning, which was a bit startling. And then I did, and it was freezing. Wow. Um, yeah, but, you know, I mean, other the walking was great. Uh, the horses were lovely. She's got a small stable there overlooking right by the training track. But... Uh, the cleaning of the water buckets, the you know, <laughs> oh, doing the stall, oh. and then the moving of all the dirt from one side of the shed row to the middle of the shed row with the oh. big heavy rake. Uh, yesterday, I couldn't move for the entire day. Wow. I can imagine. I was I was about to ask how sore are you, you know? But... Oh my gosh, I was so sore. Yeah, Mary, Mary saw my pictures. Yeah, I was getting my steps in. The walking was the easy part. It was everything else. So then, like, seriously, yesterday, I couldn't move anything. I was just like, I was walking like the Tin Man in uh, Wizard of Oz. Wow. <laughs> okay. uh, but anyways, okay. it was glorious, and it was fun, and I really missed being out on the backside, and, uh, you know, things are getting things are getting warmed up. I mean, it's not packed, and, you know, she's... um. I know I need a beamer session, Marianne. You're absolutely yes, right. Yes, yes, yes. And I want to talk about hours. I want to talk about that that a little bit too in the show too. So let's not forget about it because I'm mean, I've been watching um on Facebook and I seen one person is laying in a chair and holding a horse with it. They look more relaxed than the horse. Like they had the yeah. beam on her. <laughs> oh yeah. So 
Yeah, so I want to talk about the Phoenix to the Jets. Yes, we're going to talk about, about that, Abdul, yeah. tonight. Yes, we're going to touch yeah, we'll on talk, that shortly. Yeah, we'll do that too. So, yeah, no, I seen this this thing on Facebook, and this, she's she's just laying down there, and the horse is just there, so relaxed with this thing. So, I, I wanted to mention about that beamer, and it's not just good for horses, it's good for humans too. So, we'll touch a little bit on that and seeing the great things that wow. we're doing to these horses at Woodbine or Riding to make them comfortable. You know what I mean? Mm. We, we got to promote stuff like that, right? And it's very important. People like, like I'm Marianne that's doing a wonderful job doing that. So let's not skip on that later that. on in the show. Marianne, we have to get together immediately. <laughs> that's not- get I need help. <laughs> and you know who's, uh, there was empty stalls beside Renee, but you know who's going to be there is the uh, Safi Joseph. Safi, 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 Safi going to have yeah. some horses there. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so he's, cool. he's, he's, he's got a horse running here tomorrow night too. One of our viewers asked a question, Leroy. Answer, please. What's that? I can't. I can't about, see nothing. We're gonna talk about what? that in a bit. We're gonna talk about that in a bit. You wanna talk about that in a bit? You so you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, Patrick. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're, yeah. We've, we've, uh, Leroy and I have already discussed that we're going to uh, address okay. that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so we'll do, the, we'll do the Kentucky Derby stuff as well. So. Um, because uh, I have a couple of videos of horses that are racing in the two big derby preps this weekend. Things are getting crazy now. Oh, look yes, at this. Yes. That's the original Leroy Trotman. Oh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the original, and he's the original. <laughs> yes. Now, let's, um, let's tell our fans, though, first of all, what um, so our original guest, Yes. So, okay. Yeah. So, um, we had, was expecting two guests on tonight, Antonio and his agent, but Antonio had to do some other things and that's on my, my bad too, because I kind of mix up the dates and stuff like that. So that's on me. So his agent is going to be here to talk about her journey because she has an excellent journey that she's mm-hmm. been a jock. She's been a trainer. She's a jocks agent. I mean, she's wearing a lot of hats in this oh. game. So we're still having an exciting show coming at you. And Antonio will be back again. That's on me. And, you know, for messing things up there. So, you know, we agents do do that sometimes. So, oh. Hey, any, 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 <laughs> any blow, any blows to share, you guys can share them at me. So that was my fault on Antonio's behalf. So I do apologize to all the fans out there for that. All right, well, Antonio. I don't see why you wear that buff shirt. <laughs> you're so, you're so buffed up, nobody's gonna do nothing, sir. So, so and Antonio will be back, but again, let me be the one apologizing for that mess up there. So, you know, we'll take care of that um, on, another, on another day. So, what about and what about our man Mike? And Mike, from what Sean was saying, that Mike is off the vets list. So. If he's yeah. if if he's there, he should send us a little a little message letting us know that he will be here definitely. But him and Sean talk, we yeah, will forgive you, Leroy. Thank you, Marianne. <laughs> so Mike's supposed to be here too. So before, so we got, you know, we got a lot going on. So let's not keep our guests waiting. Any um, Hammer, she's in the back, right, Hammer? If she's in the back there, let's not keep her waiting so that we can talk about her journey and and pick up on all the things that we have to, to pick up on here. Um, okay. Welcome to Paula Bacon. Oh, oh how are you doing there? Hi, Paula. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. So, Paula, as you can see, this is Sean Hall on, on, on the top left, on my left, on your left too, and this is Jen on my right. Okay. Yeah. Island somewhere, right? Yes, Pardon I'm in me? He's, he's oh Barbados. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sean's in Barbados. I'm in Toronto area, and Leroy is in at Turfway. Can't talk. In Turfway, and can't talk. Oh, Turfway. I've got a lot of friends at Turfway, but I'm in Oldsmar right now, Florida. So. Oh. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. You're in the good weather too. So Sean well, and yeah, you're in the beautiful yeah. weather. Me and Jen is still feeling a little bit of cold. Although it's really nice here today, today again. So I'm not gonna rub that in your face, Jen. I know you still getting a little cold up there. So I'm not gonna get. Well, I'm gonna not gonna be like Sean. There, Mike. Yes. yes. Well, 
off oh, the yeah, best Mike list. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, super. All right. Here, so. All right. So I just, before this, this goes, I just want to run a little bit of um, stuff on, on Paula here because she was a trainer. She was a jock. So I want to give her jock stats first and I'm going to give her trainer stats. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay stats, so as, so as, I'm, a, I'm the stats man here, um, Paula. So, you know what I mean? I'm going to throw my stats out there. So as a jock, she rode 4,189 horses. She went 514. Ooh. Yeah, and you know, and, and and then her in the money percentage with thirty six point win uh, percent in the money, and she made four million one hundred and seventy eight thousand six hundred and forty five as a job. Okay. All right, with a fourteen win percent and a forty in the money percentage, that's mm. her jocks percentage. Now let's go to her trainer's percentage. She her trainer she she ran eight hundred and thirty eight horses, right? Win one hundred and fifty two. Mm. Um, her she wow. had um eighteen percent. Win, win percent and a 46 in the money percent with two million seven hundred and thirty three thirty two four hundred and ninety nine thousand so that's pretty oh. damn decent i don't have her her, her agent stats which she's still yeah, 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 shining yeah. like shine, shining like a diamond as an agent so i can't tell you that she'll have to give me that more information on that herself so mm. paula that being said i give your stats there but now you're an agent but this show is all about your journey and you've done a many of these shows before. So, you know, we want to know where you started and to where you are now. If you can put all that in a small nutshell. I'll Although try to, your, your journey is so big. I'll try to condense <laughs> yeah. it really quick and do like a minute. Yes. Um, started, I started on the racetrack. My mother was 16 when she had me. And Ooh. she lived in a little small, small neighborhood that was connected to Fairmont Park Racetrack. And, you know, they, my mom and dad were teenagers. My dad, you know... It was whatever. And like Sean. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> my mother, my mother, um, she got a job at the racetrack waiting table at the clubhouse. And Johnny Bacon was a jockey, came to Fairmont Park to race. And um she met him in the clubhouse waiting on him, and then they ended up dating, getting married. Then he Mark, come on. <laughs> he, he he legally adopted me and um oh. Then we moved to Detroit and he was riding in Detroit and then uh, he got in a car accident and, and he was killed when I was five. So wow. then she was a single mother again. So she went back to Fairmont Park and you know, where we were from where, and she, she got a trailer in a trailer court. She bought it. We lived in it. She worked at Fairmont Park the rest of my life till I graduated high school when I was 16 or 17. And um, she went. She went after that to different tracks, you know, doing different jobs. And I started to follow around the different tracks, and I became a jockey. Uh, I met Larry Edwards at Oaklawn, and he taught me how to gallop. And then I learned to ride myself. And uh, then from there, I I met Richard DePass, who was who was a popular agent at the time. And I I decided that I wasn't going to be a jockey unless I either got Richard to pass or Steve Elzey, which were the two popular agents. And I ended up getting Richard to pass. So wow. he's from the islands too. He's from Jamaica. I, yeah. I know. I know Richard very well, man. I know Richard very well. I've been trying to get him on a show and he would, he's keep ignoring me, man. Why? He's the greatest. He would be great. I know. He can talk uh, Paul, to all of us. Uh, Paul, no, you, can, you can work on that for Sean then. Yeah. yeah. But then Richard. I then I became a jockey. Richard DePass was my coach. I had some success doing that. Um, yeah. I hurt my back in the gate. It got pretty significant where I okay. felt like I needed to quit. And mm -hmm. I so I did. And yeah. I decided to be a jockey agent for a couple years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was okay at that. I had Bobby Walker was my first jockey at, at uh, Mountaineer Park. Mm-hmm. And then I had a, a successful run for two years there. And then a guy came up to me in the grandstand and said, I heard you wanted to be a trainer. And he gave me like five horses to train. <laughs> it just kind of spiraled from there. I, I got Richard Englander for a client. And wow. You know, yeah. Wow. Yeah. He was the Eclipse oh, Award winner. Yeah. 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 He was big. He was big climber, climbing trainer. Yeah. Winner, sorry, uh, climbing owner. Calabrese was actually my first donor. I mean, oh wow, okay. I was yeah. I was really fortunate. I had some good. I I had connections because I knew people from Kentucky when I rode and was assistant trainer in Kentucky. I was an assistant trainer for four years too. By the way, I forgot to mention that. 
before yeah. I started writing for Larry. <laughs> So I had connections and people knew my name. So it just kind of spiraled from there with the training, the horses at Mountaineer. Yes. Then I had some success. And then at the end, we had the stock market crash in 2009. And I said, I need to be a jockey agent. This is, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. And you didn't turn, you didn't turn back from there anymore. No, but I mean, I you, you had, you rode some nice horses. I mean, you rode as a bug rider at Churchill, you know, you had, you know, some decent horses training also, um, What's the name? Sam Sam Dam Damia. What's what's Sam Dania? Yeah, you know, yeah. you did pretty good with with her, and you know, I mean, like, so you've done pretty good for yourself in this game. Yeah. You know, and you're a pretty popular person, but I like I like I like your attitude and your spirit. You have a really great spirit, a very positive spirit. You know, I met you and we yeah. sit down and we talk and I felt we the same to... way about you at our dinner though too, but I also felt that way about your wife and daughter. So you you son, son, don't call don't call him a girl. A girl. <laughs> my son, before you get me in trouble, my son oh, is yeah, long here, the mother will stop that long, long hair thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I did that too. <laughs> he's such a and, cute kid though and he was looking forward to see Antonio called Antonio and him are, are really good buddies oh they're tight they're yeah. very tight the two of them are very tight and he was already ready to get up this morning and tell mom he got to get back home early from school because he had swimming and he says don't forget I got to get back home and make myself look good for, for, for Uncle Antonio on the show <laughs> You know, yeah, and he was ready. Antonio at the dinner, I remember that he went crazy over him. Yeah, him and Antonio got a, a, a connection is unbelievable. So he was kind of a little upset that Antonio wasn't on. So I tell him it was my fault and all that. So I had to make up for Antonio with it. So you know, with him. So we got to make up. But hey, if this is all about you now, we, Antonio will talk about Antonio another time. You know, I've been talking about him though, and you know, if he was here, he'd talk about himself a lot. <laughs> I know, I know, but well, 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 this is this is your show now. So right now, you got Antonio and you got Pablo, right? Yes. Yeah, and you have a bug rider now too. Yes, I just, I just, I just uh, took her. Her name's Mary Angelis uh, Almadina. She's and did she just win? She just win a race um, on the weekend or something? She won today, yeah. Oh, today, today, sorry. Okay, yeah. today. Okay. Road one, won one today. Wow. Mm. So being an agent myself, and I know we know how it is having two writers like the two writers you have, how, how should I say, difficult it is to handle two writers like that or how great it is to have a, a wonderful relationship with those guys and be able to do the job that you're, the wonderful job that you're doing with them? It's fantastic, as you well know, to have two writers that are that caliber because you can – you know, you got one trainer that wants one, but then they can't have that one. And you mentioned the other one. Of course, they want the other one next, whichever one it is. You can flip them back and forth between your your business, their own business. You can. But you also have the the competitive edge with both of them. They both want to be number one. So you, it's a delicate line. Like you have to be fair about things. But, you know, it it's just it can it can get complicated that way. Because you're trying to do the right thing, and maybe one thinks this happened and or this way, and you know, it maybe didn't, or it maybe did, and you couldn't help it. It's just it it can be a complicated situation having two very very high power jockeys in the same unit, you know, when you're doing your business. But it's also a blessing because, like I said, you don't have to give things away a lot. You know as well as I do when you have one good jockey, and you have one that's in the middle somewhere that people want, you have to give a lot of business away. away. And yes. with these two guys, I rarely have to, if I have to give something away, it's because it's a third mount. Okay. All right. Another thing is, I know you're a pretty popular person. So how important that popularity at the racetracks you are, how much, how great does that do for you? Um, I think, I think the friends that I've made in this business have been the most important thing that I've ever done for myself. It's been an important thing for me personally because I need friends because I like to be around people. But it's also been such a benefit for my business and my business relationships that it's irreplaceable. People couldn't imagine, you know, that the amount of things that your friends will do for you, like they can ride this jockey or that jockey. They're going to ride your jockey. If it's a good jockey, they're going to ride your jockey over another jockey because they like you and they want to be, you know, they want to help you. So being popular has been, if that's what you call it, has been uh, <laughs> has been an, an an immense blessing. I, I I wouldn't be anywhere right now without people helping me, and that's that's factual. Okay, but that being said, I want to pivot back to 
you were a trainer because you were a high claiming trainer too, right? I claimed I claimed high claiming horses for a lot of money, and I and I claimed them. I claimed all kinds of horses, but yeah, I was a claiming trainer for sure. Okay, so that 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 leads to this question: being a claiming trainer, and then you turn agent. Were there any guys out there that kind of kept kept receipts? Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. The first one being Joe Martin. <laughs> Joe Martin. You know, he's a pretty popular trainer. He trains at Oakland. His whole family's in the business. The Martin brothers, they're big owners. Absolutely, those are that's the first name that comes. To me. He kept receipts, but he came around later. Okay. He came around okay. Later, but yeah. Okay. There was lots. There was lots of problems for me at the beginning because of that. Absolutely. Okay, and um, being on the racetrack from such a young age, um, how much did that done for you to where you are today? Well, it's funny you say that because the the, the little girl that I'm working for right now, she is so inexperienced with the racetrack itself and the people on the backside. She just basically is a tiny little person and her brother became a jockey. And so she went to school in Puerto Rico and decided to become a jockey and mm -hmm. she's put her heart and soul into it. Absolutely. She deserves everything that's coming to her. But what I'm getting at is I spent my life on the racetrack. I know everything about the racetrack, everything about horses, everything about grooms that groom horses, everything about pony people, ponies, all of it. And I catch yeah. myself in awe on the daily because she never was on a racetrack. So yes, did that help me more than I ever knew now that I'm working with her because she doesn't even know the language, the lingo, mm -hmm. the, the little, you know, common yeah. of what you say, just racetrack people say with the things and the way she expresses herself about horses doing this or doing that. I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's so proper. So <laughs> it's like she's going to English school or something. She's like, this horse was trying to go over here. And I'm like, oh, he was lugging out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have any of the terms down, you know? So. so so from a female, I think she's got a good mentor then because you, you can show her the ropes very, very well. So she's kind of fallen into great hands then. Yeah, she she did fall into great hands because I'll be honest with you, there's nobody on on planet Earth in this business that will take care of her. Will 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 do for her what I'm gonna do for her. A absolutely, mm -hmm. that's one thing I'll pat myself on the back for. I'm gonna help her. I'm gonna be her mentor, and I'm gonna make sure she she gets a fair shake in every way. And that's my goal for her. So what what was what way does she catch it right now? She's still a ten pound, right? Do you want to talk a little bit about, about her? I don't even want to talk about it because it's such a problem. <laughs> oh no! Okay, she all right. Eighty eight I... pounds. <laughs> what? Oh my god! Idiot pounds. Eighty eight pounds. Yeah. I you know you always think that's going to be a blessing, but let me tell you, it's been rough. Wow. Eighty eight wow. pounds. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. Let's go back to the journeyman then. <laughs> wow. Hey, guys, you guys jump in here a little bit in at any time. Would you guys please? Nobody. So, I just wanted to say, like, um, just Marianne DeGans is, uh, is commenting here as we went along. And, uh, you know, she's fascinated, as we all are, by your background story, Paula. She says, it sounds like your mother instilled resilience and hustle in you. So, she said girl power, yes. She did. But you know, the most the most thing my mother didn't instill all of that in me, but the most thing that my mother gave me was immense love. Immense mm -hmm. love. She worked all the time. My track when I grew up was a year round racetrack and it was night racing. So she worked all day and all night. And wow. I still felt more comforted and more love, even though she wasn't even there. I mean, I can't explain it, but it was just it's a very close relationship, and I and I, I cherish it. Okay, all right. Wow. I'm glad you say something like that, then, because um, one of the reasons Sean I always talk about with this show and stuff like that is, and we 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 had a show about respect and stuff like that here on this show, and we have a lot of young guys out there coming into the game, and mm -hmm. being that you, I mean, your time that you started in the game is that was like in the '90s. Yeah, maybe you know what I mean, and it's not like now. Yeah. But and you had a lot of 
good support around you, especially see you, you got a lot of love from your mother. But if you have to, and now you have a young writer that's, you know, pretty young in the game too, and this doesn't understand the racetrack well, and you have to kind of teach her the lingo. So yeah. there's more youngsters out there that wants to come onto the racetrack. And you're the person, the spokesperson for to talk about youngsters. What would you say to those youngsters out there that wants to do the same thing your young writer is doing? Well, that's that's one area that I'm that I'm I'm fearful for now because people trying to take my path. I, racetracks are closing. Racetracks are condensing dates. Racetracks are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller meets, and there's more jockeys than there are racetracks now. I mean, I I would actually try to deter somebody that was actually you know wanting to start from scratch right now and say, is there anything else that you know how to do? Is there any other passion? If there's any other way to get them to do something different, to be honest, wow. I would try to get them to do something different. And if it's not, then I would say you have to you have to go the road I did. You have to be a hot walker, a groom. You you have to get with you know the right people that are going to bring you along slowly because the fast track does not make things well. It doesn't. I mean, my little girl just spent two years in the jockey school in Puerto Rico. If you can, if you can take that route, that's amazing because the things that she learned over there shocks me. I mean, she's come out. She might be tiny and she might have, you know, a little strength problem, but she's got brains for the race. She's got, she's got knowledge beyond what I could imagine. So if, if somebody was going to come on the racetrack and wanted to be actually a jockey, I would want them to try and go to a jockey school, to be honest. And if they wanted to be a trainer, then they have to get a job hot walking first, grooming, coming up the ranks. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. You know, and I'm, but I'm, you know, I'm sort of from the old school where I started as a hot walker and I was a hot walker for years and, um, you know, did the whole backstretch thing for five years. And I went the route of, of writing about horse racing, but, you know, I see, I, what I see today on the backside is, is, you know, some younger people trying to sort of parachute in. And I, you know, that's, this is kind that's of, right. yeah. And it's kind of the problem though, I think, because, you know, tracks are so desperate. I know Woodbine desperate for help. Mm. And that's, a, you know, that's the problem. I mean, there's, you, you know, you can't go and grab someone off the street and say, hey, come on, walk this horse, clean these buckets and all this stuff. They have no idea what's going on. Dan, you and I come from a different generation with this horse racing thing where when you you had people waiting at the stable gate for jobs and you could grab somebody and they actually knew what they were doing. Yes. Now, if you if you get lucky enough to have a person waiting at the stable gate, they they just basically have no no clue about. They might not even have ever touched a horse. No, so, exactly. Yeah. And they and they also now the help nowadays it seems like they expect a lot of money for a little work. So it's just Oh, I know. It's 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 the the help situation on the on the racetracks is probably the biggest problem that we all have. Yeah. yeah and it, what, yeah, is, right. I, what, what I want to add to this is, is there a problem in North America then? Because we got so much youngsters here in Barbados. I want to just work with horses. And it's a problem in North America. Yeah, for sure. Why, why is that though? Why, why North American people don't want to be in business anymore? Anybody I, answer that? I, well, they want to be in the business. They just don't want to learn it from the right area. They, I mean, they come in, they just don't want to learn it from the bottom to the top and they, and they want paid this amount for this little knowledge. So, wow. It's just yeah. it, it's just a different time. I can't. I don't really can't put my finger on why, but that's yeah. it. Marianne, Marianne says it right now. Lazy. Oh dear. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it, it, the kids, you know, the kids these days. I sound like an old lady, but anyway, but <laughs> you know, it's like they, they. You're you're right. I mean, they want big money and they don't want to do the work. Um, and Lori Gulas has joined us. Uh, yeah. Another famous jockey. And they have no clue how to put on bandages. Uh, uh, it's terrible. Not much horsemanship left to find anywhere. Uh, earlier, wow. she says, I'm sad to say I agree with Paula, what she's saying right now. Um, it's not the same racetrack world that we came up in. To. I, mm -hmm. And Marianne, I sound like an old lady, too. But, yeah, no, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's a state of the world. Now, I mean, the one problem that uh, Woodbine has, which is another issue on top of everything. I mean, like the Safi Josephs and the 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 oh the powerhouse people. trainers, the two hundred horse trainers that win at thirty eight percent. That's a problem. Yeah, well, 
Well, he has it's some a good stalls problem that woodbine. some people have, you know. <laughs> yes, but he has some stalls at Woodbine, and I guess he, he's had them for a few years. But Jonathan Thomas, there's some other trainers that want to have stalls at Woodbine, but they can't get their help across the border. Oh, so yeah. that's another problem, and that and their help from the states is actually help that's going to know what the heck they're doing with the horses. So, you know, if they can't get them across the border here, then they got to you know, pluck people from somewhere. But, you know, it's, it's, it is a big problem with Woodbine, no question. Well, let me tell you, you guys don't even come close to having the problem that we have in Erie, Pennsylvania at Presque Isle. I, you can't get anybody licensed there from anywhere, even, it's amazing. I, it, the, we have teenagers that come from graduating or, or summer jobs from high school. And our, our people on the backside, our trainers and our our my group of friends, I've got a great group of friends at Presque Isle. They're the best friends I have in the world. And they all work different jobs at Presque Isle. And so some of them, like my friend Shanna, she's teaching these people to do the smallest jobs. And it's days of teaching and then hoping they don't get killed in the process. Yeah. It's just, and, and they don't, they don't, they're not really learning well and they're, they're not into it. And it's just basically a, a money thing and I remember when I when I got my first job hot walking I was I took very much pride in that I wanted to be the best hot walker and every single thing I did the best the best the best you know so I, I was exactly the same way I mean I wanted to be the best at everything I was very serious about the way I cleaned the uh uh oh my gosh I'm drawing a blank you know the, the shed row the shed row oh, the shed row of the shed row doing the raking but also you know, pushing the water down of the, you know, the sewers and stuff and cleaning all that, you know. Wow. It's, but uh, but guys, guys I, I totally get what you're saying because I'm on the same page as you. But we got to understand today's generation, they got, they're exposed to so much. They're exposed to so much social, social media, media and everything like that, you know, so that we need to get, I mean, the only people you're going to get to do this are like, you know, a lot of Spanish guys that are from the small, those kind of those places that those are still. Those Spanish guys are the best help in the world. Though. And They're then, and then from the West Indies that are still into it, you know what I mean? But the, yeah. the North American guys today, the, the kids today, they're exposed to so much social media and stuff like that. It's, it's very hard. So we got to understand that. Unfortunately, that's the way life is today. And, and things like horse racing and all those in farming and stuff is going to suffer a bit. Unfortunately, yeah. you know that's what I right. mean? There's, there's and, all kinds of reasons for all of this. You know, so it, it's, it's it's a tough, tough, like you and like you're saying, and now now you got heists coming in. Even with your jocks, you got to register them on the heist and everything. I and, think I'm you know, registered on heist and I'm a jockey. And, and, yeah, you have to be registered on it because last year when I when I went and got um, hustle book up, gosh, I didn't realize they had to do all these things. You know what I mean? So we the, the game is changing so much, and you gotta keep up the par with it, and you gotta find the right people. And unfortunately, the government, you know, and Woodbine, you gotta bring people in. Last year, you were, it was you had to register the job for three months. We got a little lucky now, and I think this year you only have to register it for a month. But all the red tape that you still have to go through. And like you see, the the North American trainers can't the, the American trainers can't get their guys across the border because of all of this stuff, you know. Yeah. Unfortunately, right? I was talking to Tim Ham last year about um, getting guys to work, and what he told me that he paid for the visas for five guys, and how hard it was for him to get them here, and then keep them here, and then have to ship them back over for three months and come back, and all the money he paid. I was like dumbfounded. It was an immense amount of money and hard work for him. It's tough for people to yeah. get the right people. Yeah, wow. so we it's, we it's, can't fix that today. No, no, <laughs> no, no, um, no. We've had some people here. Peter Gaskin, who's an agent and um, a horse owner, um, he said he interviewed a guy for a job at Woodbine. The first thing he wanted to know was how much am I going to be paid, and my answer was I have no idea until I see what you are worth. <laughs> and you know that's. Well, the, that's the racetrack thing, you know, um, Sean Coltart, 33, la 33 years later, I'm still teaching people how to put on bandages. And Lori Goulos chimed in and said that Marianne said it, it's laziness and a terrible sense of entitlement and no work ethic or self pride. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to say that with every young person, but I, I do find it is a different 
But, you know, it's the land of electronics and stuff now. We didn't yeah. have, you know, there was no cell phones when I was working on the racetrack. It's a different yeah. atmosphere, and we don't understand it because we're yeah. older, and they're probably saying that, you know, we completely don't understand them, and they're absolutely right. We don't. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. But it's interesting. So it's interesting that, you know, and I get you were a jockey and you were successful. And I mean, what was the best part about being a jockey? Oh, everything. I love all of it. <laughs> I love being a jockey. That was the only thing I ever knew that I wanted to do. And the traveling, I love traveling to different places and being at different racetracks. I loved, you know, meeting new people. I loved, I, I mean, I just loved I just loved it all. I loved, I loved being in the jocks room. I loved yeah. it. That was the thing that you, the camaraderie between you and your fellow jockeys, when you're riding at a place and you, you become friends with them. It's just such a weird thing because when I quit riding, that was the biggest thing that I miss. I quit riding and I had a hard time not ever being in the jock room. And when I quit training, I fed my own horses every day at four 30 in the afternoon at a, I had a training center that was about, 10 miles from my house. And I fed them every day, either at the track or the training center. One of the places I fed for all those years, eight years, basically feeding every day. I couldn't, when I quit riding, I couldn't stand not being in the jocks room. And when I quit training, I couldn't stand not having to go to the barn and feed at four 30. It was so weird. <laughs> so those were the two things, you know, the, the catch 22s. But now you're training or training. Now you're traveling like crazy as well. I mean, just, you know, I know, and I know you guys are at Tampa Bay for an extended period that the meet goes to what June? No, May, uh, May 4th. Oh, May 4th. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you know, just reading stuff about Antonio and, and, uh, He's you a know, monster. Yeah. Well, you called him uh, a, what, what, I don't know what it's wild spirit or a wild man or, Something like that. But, I mean, you're still going. To, I mean, you guys are, you, you said that you would drive and he would sleep and he would drive. <laughs> and, he would sleep, and you're going to Colonial Downs and you're winning races there and you're coming up to Presque Isle or whatever. And you're here, there and everywhere. Well, and I, I have to give him all the credit for that because for somebody to be that spirited, to be able, like that high strung to be able to, or that, to have that much gumption, just to put it that way. Uh, yeah. he was making plenty good of good money at Presque Isle and he, he didn't want to go to Woodbine. He didn't get, he didn't renew his visa. So he couldn't go back to Woodbine. So he's like, you know, he, he can't sit there idle. So he's like, we'll do colonial. And then I started working on it months ahead, like right then. And we're, okay. We're going to do colonial. But I had no idea, to be honest with you, that every three days we were going to be in the car together for eight hours each way. And it was <laughs> like every three, four days we were in the car, in the car, in the car. And, you know, I, I have to give him credit for that because he was the one that was physically putting himself out there, physically but, tired, physically exhausted. Get out of the jock room at 6.30 on the evening of Wednesday evening, ride the last race at Prescott, get in my car at 6.30. He drives the first three or four hours, and then I take over at midnight and drive us, you know, get us in there at 3 a.m., and he sleeps. But, I mean, and then the next day he gets up and sometimes had to work for Mark Cassie very early in the morning. And then would go ride all day. Post time was one o'clock. That's that, that's a tough schedule for a guy. That's a yeah. tough. Schedule. But Paula, these guys might not have met you, like really know you well and know Antona. I kind of know you guys a little bit. Putting yeah. you two together, the energy between the two of you, though, you can't take nothing away from that. So I mean, you guys got to give applaud yourself a little bit too. And let's not forget Pablo also, okay? I mean, yeah. we talk about Anton, but let's not forget your other writer. But you, your guys' personality together, it fits. So mm -hmm. spending that kind of time together in a car. Yeah, we had a lot of laughs. A lot. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? And, and and both of you can be very funny. And you guys, your guys are both of your high spirit people. Yeah. So, so well, it's a, a great combination. You know what? The funny part is, though, I've uh, speaking of Pablo, you know, I've, I've worked for him for eight years. And I, I owe a lot to Pablo because he gave me a big chance. And you know, we, we ran with it together. And we've had just nothing but great, great success together. And I will tell you that being on a car ride and being on a car trip, me and Pablo, we kill it. We sing the entire time. We have the music. <laughs> we're, we're rock stars. It's a totally different thing than me and Antonio because me and Antonio are just a little bit. Me and Pablo <laughs> singing. We're rocking. We're screaming. <laughs> 
for, and I mean, that would be the whole eight hours for me and Pablo. So it's a different vibe, but it's a cool vibe too. Yeah, yeah. Pablo's and, a good travel buddy. He just doesn't like to do it. Antonio's the guy that'll get in the car, let's go, let's go. Pablo, yeah. like, Pablo, come on. I got to take you over here. We got to do this. <laughs> but, now, but what happens then when Tampa's over? So where do where do all these three uh, riders go and where are you going when Tampa's over? We're all all four of us are going to Presque Isle down. Presque Isle. <laughs> oh, okay. There's not, there's not out. a lot of mouths to go around there, but I'll figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> you know, I I know we talked about your tour, but I want to pivot back to one rider, Willie Martinez. What's the relationship you guys had, you know, me? Because there's a guy that you wanted to be his agent before, right? Well, yeah. Um, Willie Willie was my first real, real big boyfriend. I mean, we were... Oh, okay, okay. I was probably... I think I was 20 when... 19 or 20 when I met him. And then we started dating a year after that. So I either started... A tw I'm, I'm sure I was 20 years old when we started dating. And we were in Kentucky together. And we spent seven years living together and dating each other in, in the early nineties when I, I was, I was an exercise rider and then became a jockey, but he was a jockey the whole time. And, uh, we, we've, we've had an onstanding friendship. His, his girlfriend, Jamie Martinez, or I'm sorry, his wife. Um, she's a very, very, very good friend of mine. They I, actually, I got them together. So it's just, it's just been kind of our friendship. I knew would last forever. Just, I was integrated into his family we were kind of just one unit. And when we broke up, we had a great breakup and we have remained extremely good friends since then. Like give each other a kidney type friends. Wow. <laughs> so, but you never tried to, I thought you were trying to be his agent at a point in time. I was going to be his agent one winter here at Tampa. And then Pablo called me and it was a year round gig with Pablo. And, you know, I kind of, okay. kind of said, Willie, Hey, you spin really. <laughs> spin really. You spin really. Oh, I, that's why I asked that question because I thought you were trying to be his agent. I didn't know that you guys had a relationship and stuff like that. So yes, I didn't yeah, need to go. We, yeah. We, we are lifelong best friends. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Yeah, that's why so she I took you down a whole really. road, another road. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's not go down Sorry that road. That. <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> I, I kind of got a surprise there with that one because I thought when I was reading that you're trying to be his agent and stuff like that. So. Oh, yeah, I would, I would oh. always be his agent if it came about, but it just never, ever. The one time when it was the right time, Pablo happened to call me. And Pablo was a life-changing situation for me. So, you know, mm -hmm. Willie was just going to come with me for the winter and then go back to his agent. Well, that's pretty great, though, that you have all four. You're all heading out to uh, Presque Isle. Now, Antonio, when he rode here, I mean, obviously he was very, very popular. And it was big news. I think it was him and uh, Sean Bridgmahan that uh, both came up that one year to yeah. ride here. But Antonio was obviously very, um, you know, in demand, no question. And yeah. I, I assume that he, he, he liked it here. He just didn't um, renew his visa like he, he liked it up here. Oh, he loved it. He loved he He still loves it there. He has nothing but accolades for Woodbine. And every chance we get to come there on the weekends, we do. The problem was it was for he wants to ride in the in the United States and for him to ride for six months at Presque Isle and six months the same six months at Woodbine and have to travel literally for six months straight. The colonial thing worked out good because it was nine weeks. That's mm -hmm. livable. But to travel like he did for those two meets that he rode at Woodbine, it was too yeah. much it was too hard. I mean, it was really, really, really hard on him. And plus yeah riding styles like he can use his whip a certain way at woodbine and then he can't use it that way he can't it, he his brain had to reprogram itself every three or four days when he came from one place to the other and that, that got hard for him hard. that's hard that's yeah hard. no it's very interesting that uh, you know we have the underhanded rules here and um not too many tracks have those i can't remember who we were talking to in a recent show about Someone said, you know, hopefully they'll go back. Oh, I know who it was. It was uh, as Juan Flores. Flores, yeah. yeah. He, he tends to get quite a few fines for uh, oh, not yeah, remembering yeah, yeah, yeah. to get backhanded, yeah. you know. And uh, it's 
yeah, I guess it would be hard. Then you go to another track, it's like, oh, yeah, I can spin the stick. The last two times I had Pablo, not last year, but the year before, the last two times I had Pablo at Woodbine, he got a twelve hundred dollar fine both times for raising his. Oh, book. really? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it hurts. But yeah. Antonio had it down to a to a science. The problem was when he got back to America, and would try to ride, you could only hit six times. And over there, if, if you hit underhanded, you can pretty much hit him as many times as you like. You know, tap on the shoulder and all that. And you can't do that here. Even a tap on the shoulder counts. So he was getting rattled by that a little bit. I mean, he got it down, but it was just, it's just, it was just a lot of driving, a lot of rule changes, yeah. a lot of red tape, crossing the border, sitting in that line sometimes would be an hour. Yeah. Yeah. And also, guys, let's, let's go ahead. Guys, we got Mike here. I think we should bring in Mike to ask a few questions and stuff, man, because we can't keep him. He, he's been missing for so long and he's chomping at the bit. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, yeah, we could bring Mike in for. Bring uh, Mike in, man. Yeah, okay. Mike Dunflow, trainer. Mike Dunflow, trainer. <laughs> it's time Ask to. Mike anything. Ask Mike. Ask Mike. My. Ask Mike. Mike. Anything. Anything. <laughs> well, for, well, he's got a Barbados shirt on too. Look at that! Wow. Look First at the shirt. Part. Look at the shirt, Paula. Have a look at the shirt. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this shirt was sent to me because I, I didn't go down to Barbados. I was supposed to go down there. We're having a ribbon cutting with me and Patrick. A lot of disappointed people down there, Paula. But yeah. they sent me back a shirt, and I am so proud to wear this shirt. Oh. Now, Paula, between me and you, in case no one else is listening, the label on this shirt says Made in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> Paula, you remember me? Mike Wright Sr. introduced us uh, three years ago. I think it was three winters ago in Tampa Bay, and I rode on your golf cart. Do you remember me? As soon as I saw your face, I remembered you. <laughs> You've seen it on a milk crate before, eh? Absolutely. How could I forget you? You're so much fun. Well, Paula, I'm glad you're here because the other guy would have just took up airtime. <laughs> you got a cut. What happened? You your head. Uh, when I heard Leroy messed up the guest, I slipped and banged my head on the counter. <laughs> Before we go any further, Mike, hold on, Mike. Let's welcome Mike back. Mike, how's your health? Can you, uh, can you know I... what, Leroy? I'm getting stronger by the day and, and everything. I'm glad that I got the surgeries done and, and I feel better. And I, hey, I appreciate everybody sending out the thing, you know, the wishes and all that. Uh, but all the guys back in Barbados, it hasn't stopped. I just get emails every single day. I'm trying to answer everybody. So what I've done is I just told Sailor, and he's going to tell everybody more. <laughs> okay. I, I also have stuff for you that I would, that's, that was sent up by me for you also at home, too. So I got something from, from Patrick. Home. No, from your, from your fans in Barbados. Oh, that, you know, that Paula Patrick and I used to be pretty tight. Eh? Are you not tight now? No, things went bad. Leroy blocked my number in June when I stopped winning races. <laughs> You know, Mike Wright, Mike Wright Sr., and he's a fan of this show, Paula. He's not, I'm surprised he hasn't called in because he always spoke so highly. And he, when he introduced me to you, he, he went on for hours bragging how great of a jockey you were and a person. And when I heard you speak tonight about your journey, if that's a journey, and you say how you got that young bug girl and you're teaching her the ropes of the backside. Yeah. For people that don't know the sport and know the backside, it's a whole different world and the lingo is different and, and to be in your hands, she's got a great shot. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I tell you what, I really didn't realize how much of a different world it was until I took her. Honestly. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's funny. Eh? <laughs> we <laughs> we're all raised in it. So we think it's normal. <laughs> it's a sponge. That little, that little thing, that little dynamo is a sponge. <laughs> she's listening, well, and learning like crazy. Well, I hope you do well with her, and I hope she has a great little uh, campaign and a career. Thank you. Now, Leroy, yes, sir. let's go back to when you were out with dinner with Paula. Did any chance Leroy pick up the tab, or did he happen to go to the washroom when the, the bill came? <laughs> Sean, what's your bet? <laughs> he went to the washroom. <laughs> That's what I got written down on the journey. I, I I did not walk away from that dinner thinking Leroy was cheap at all. But I don't oh. Really? I don't remember who picked up the tab. It was me, Jordan, Antonio, Tony, Leroy. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, me and me and Antonio were tab pickers uppers, so it might have been us. But you know what, Jordan? I don't know. Jordan and Leroy? I, I can't remember. It wasn't Jordan. I'll bet on that. <laughs> Jordan's pretty good about picking up tab. Paula, Paula, Paula. Just remember who you're talking to here. You see the two on the left here? <laughs> they they throw punches. Let they, you know what? Before them lives in glass houses and they love throwing stones. Like a, a little Paula, okay. little we're like the two old guys on the Muppet Show. <laughs> and, and the one, the one in the top corner, he has a he has a big mouth when he's by himself. When he's close yeah. to you, he he don't throw punches. Mike, I nope. I can't do nothing with Mike. I can't put these pipes on Mike's neck because I might send him back to the hospital. So I'm gonna <laughs> let him keep. <laughs> I, can tell, I can tell you Leroy. this: that's the only dinner I've ever had with Leroy. But I can tell you this: Jordan is not afraid to pick up the tab. There you go. Oh, you agents stick together. Uh, <laughs> we have to. You know they had the conference call, eh? Uh, Sean, Sean, you know that, right? But back in your day when you trained, there wasn't. They didn't have cell phones. There were still tin cans and rope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what they do now nowadays, Sean. You call up and Leroy. Leroy's got two Looter and uh, Jordan on the other line. Listen, I got Dunsworth. Best he can be is third, and I got. A, I'm already committed to Drexter or Cassie. So you know what happens, eh, Sean? You get the third call. It's Looter. <laughs> oh, Paula, Paula, you're getting the you're, you're getting Mike Dunzel off a long layup, and he's like razor sharp. I'm fresh. I've been bunting at the wedding. <laughs> hey. and, and Jen, earlier you were trying to say wash the webbings, weren't you? Not the drains. <laughs> oh, I was talking about the wash bay, Lori. No, she was talking about the wash, the wash, wash back, like you know, getting it all clean. Oh, you know what? I can't believe that you made it on Monday, Jen. I I can't believe you did it. I can't believe no, that no. What I can't believe is that I actually was able to move on Tuesday to at least like go to the bathroom. Oh my god! Hey, did you? Did, how many did you walk? Uh, five. Five. Well, you come over to my barn. I'll let you walk six. That was nothing. No, it wasn't the walking. It was the stalls. It was the buckets. Well, you're not but, doing stalls over mine. You'll get a couple of buckets, walk six, and we'll sit around and have a cookie. She <laughs> wants a glass of wine. She doesn't want a cookie. Thank you. Yes, That's thank the you. code, Paula. Oh. <laughs> Stay focused. I kind of really like you. Can we get the jock you on? Know what, well, you're, you're right. You're absolutely right. I miss, you know, I'm usually a little bit smarter than that, even though I'm not. I think we're catching you on an off night. I really do. Oh. Well, what do you want? Leroy threw all the pressure on you. Uh, we're, we're bumping the jock. You're on all night. That was no pressure. I told Leroy, don't worry. I can talk for hours. Oh, I know. I know you can. I've heard that about you. That's part of my job. Yes, and Leroy's got the gap, too. They all got it. Leroy and I were tight. I told you that, but didn't I, Paula? <laughs> Paula, did you know I was an agent? I can't imagine that, but yeah. Yes, Paula. I was an agent and a very Paula. good one. Paula, you should have you should have seen his notepad and his pencil. Not I pen, made pencil. I made it wood shop. <laughs> you should have <laughs> I had a I had a jockey that went to uh, Queen's Plate two or three times, didn't he, Jen? Two. Two times? I had a Mill Ram Sammy. Oh wow. Oh, right, he was right. 63 years old at the time. <laughs> oh, you had a good jockey. I got him when Neil Wilson drained him. I got him at the end, sweetheart. I was still shoeing horses and being his agent in the morning. I had spare time. He's you like you, have Paula. Go of your own, Dunzo. I know. Hey, and you know what? I seen him the other day uh, galloping still, eh? Can you believe that? He still loves the sport. This is a sport you can't get it, you can't get away with. It's like herpes. He ain't leaving. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Jen, stay focused. Ever since you got that guy, Paula, if you watch the back of Jen's screen, stay focused, Paula. There will be a guy serving cocktails in a thong. <laughs> He's the duck cleaner. You <laughs> got what I'm saying, Paula? Don't listen to I don't go here, Paula. Paula I tell the is, truth. 
This is what happens when Mike comes on the show, Paula. Oh my God, he's the greatest. <laughs> Good thing I don't drink, eh, Paula? Yeah. <laughs> Look at my forehead. <laughs> Marianne, Marianne DeGan says you need some Trazodone to settle his ass down. <laughs> I'm on it. I got a drip here. <laughs> I'm so I haven't been out in three weeks, Paula. I'm excited. Leroy, you know, we're back to training. You can come by my barn when you get back in town, eh? Okay, I will. I will. You can I'll cut through the center, you'll get to Michelle Love's barn. <laughs> okay, I, have I will. To I ask will. my friend Debbie Rhombus about you. Oh, no. Oh, oh, God. Oh, oh. Oh. I, I guarantee he says he knows me. It's me. <laughs> Debbie Rhombus. Debbie Rhombus, Mike. Debbie, I know Debbie. A good van driver. Yes, yes. Hey, she's got she some good art, too. Driver. Some good tats. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my, she's my. a great, you know, she's a lovely woman. She's a great person. And she'll say nothing but good about me. And if wow. she doesn't, she's a liar. <laughs> That's who I always sit with her and Jordan when I come to the races there, though. Yeah, they're good people. Jordan's a good guy too. I just like I like I like to bug everybody, Paula. Don't don't feel so special. Uh, no, I, I got you. I got you. <laughs> but how about the shirt? Eh? Isn't that a beautiful Barbados shirt? Made made in Jamaica. Don't worry about it. Don't hey, worry am about I, it. Am I no, I'm not. I'm, hey, and I want to give a shout out to the kids in the sweatshop that made it. <laughs> I got a jockey headed to Jamaica this weekend. The ride? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, like it, where they have a big race there. They do, and and something happened. He was going there to ride the big race, um, and something happened. I don't know what exactly. I can't explain it because I really don't know. But anyway, he's going anyway. He's still going to go there and ride a couple horses, but he's not going to be riding the big race. Oh, okay, okay. It's weird circumstances, but he's pretty excited to go over there, and the people have been really nice to him, and so he's going to be an island jockey, Pablo. Sunday. Oh, wow. oh, okay. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Good for him. Well, I, I wish him all the best. We should yeah. actually then, we might as well mention this because people have been asking that Patrick Husband is riding Saturday uh, in Trinidad um, uh -huh. in the, um, now I've forgotten the name of the race. I think it's like the Champagne Stakes. Yeah, and it's like fifty thousand dollars or something. But as Leroy said, um, and he's riding, um, Super Bird, who's a horse that's done a lot of good running down there over the last few years. Now, the Trinidad card is five races and like yeah. 30 yeah, horses or something. Like, yeah, yeah, there's very low in horses down there too. The horse population down there is yeah. down too, man. So, you, you know, know why? Yeah. they're all in Guyana. That's why they're all in Guyana. Oh, everybody's in right? Guyana. Yeah. Guyana. Why well, the money's there in Guyana? But yeah. there's money now, yeah. Since they found oil, there's a lot of money now in Guyana. Yeah, so, yeah. so Patrick is riding Super Bird in that uh, Champagne Stakes in Trinidad on Saturday. So I know people have been wondering if that was actually real news. But yes, yeah. that was real news. And um, before I forget, I should mention this because everybody will know um, <gasps> will know Frida Stronic, Frank Stronic's <gasps> wife. Uh, did pass away yesterday. Oh, my Lord. Oh, I didn't know that. Mrs. I, Mrs. Oh. Uh, Frida Stronach, who, um, yeah. you know, always oh. in the background, but the horse lover, you know, full full on horse lover. And, you know, she's the one that pretty much started the Adina Springs Retirement Program. Um, oh. So, uh, yeah, very sad news. I did not yeah. know. You know, I saw her late last year. I mean, she's always at the races. Always, yes. always, always. And um, so, yeah, I don't know much details about that. She was 81 years old, so um, that's too bad. It's I've seen her last fall also at the races and always cheerful and always there to watch the horses. And, you know, big part of it. She'll be missing the sport. A yeah, great right. name. Sure. Definitely. A very nice lady, too. Yeah, very elegant. Mm -hmm. um, but the other big so, news I see at Woodbine is that Steve Lim is back at Woodbine. What was that? So Steve Lim. So Steve Lim has left um, the Stronic fold because he was yeah. um, he was running sort of Palm Meadows. He was out in California. He was at Laurel. 
Um, yeah. He is the Woodbine former racing secretary, but today it was announced that he's back at uh, Woodbine in Ontario, and he's going to be the executive director of the Ontario HBPA, and he'll be starting in May. So uh, Steve Lim has gone full circle from Woodbine wow. all around the world, whoop, back at Woodbine. So Another, another well, great I person. Great person. You spotted a good man, eh, hey, Leroy? Would you not yes. stay for the position? Yes, 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 yes. yes. There's yes. a guy's yes. family. You know, I can remember when he was uh, wearing diapers and, and, and walking one. And his family's <laughs> been in the business forever, and he's done a big circle. On, he, he, he worked with the horses. He's cleaned buckets too, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> Jen, he cleaned buckets, and I don't recall him crying about his shoulder. I can't move my shoulders, okay? It's like I've been no, but around. to have Steve back here at Woodbine, Jen, I think, and no, especially with the HBPA, yeah. I think what a great spot for the man because he knows the yeah. horsemen. And and, yeah. and and I tip our hat to the our sponsor, the HBPA. Great, that's a great thing. That's a great move. I never wow. minded. I never minded cleaning buckets, Mike. I just didn't like. I've never liked holding for the blacksmith. That must oh, be I, that's yeah. why I become a blacksmith. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did it just because I couldn't stand it. It's the worst job in the world. Uh, I've lost two wives for being holders. <laughs> I never mind the stuff. My what? story is the same as you. I had one, and she was a holder for me when I was 20, 21 approximately. And we stayed together for a while. Then I lost her. I got the same story, Paula. Same story. I like it. Yeah, I loved it. it. I appreciate it. I loved it when you were talking. I started giggling to myself. I said, my stories are similar. <laughs> she was a jock. You were an exercise boy, Mike. Yeah, I wasn't very good. She was. <laughs> Her records are there. The Stat Central said so. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, Leroy, I got another pony, eh? You have another pony? Oh, yeah, this better? one's a Is lot quieter. Oh, oh yeah? Are you going to actually oh. ride this one or what? Are you going to get on it? Are you going to get gonna on it? No, no, one. I feed him mints, Leroy. I feed him mints. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to get on them later this summer. It's the smallest pony you'll ever see, Leroy. I can oh, get boy. off at any time I want. <laughs> I can't wait till I ride out there and ride your abs. Hey, Roger Adler parks his big white pony, and then Josie Carroll's comes up. Mind you, won't even see me. You just see my head sticking out at the top. I, I was complaining about his pony last year that he was afraid of it, and uh, you know, it broke my foot. Then he broke his foot. Yeah, oh, that's no fun riding a pony that you're scared of. I hate that. That sucks. Yeah, they're no fun, and you're scared to get on them, right? It sucks. They got to wait a minute now. Marianne wants to know if your new pony is nice or is that what happened to your face? Oh, you know what happened? I told you what happened to my face. Sean, they're not buying this. I went into makeup early. They couldn't hide this. Has <laughs> Sean still got curtains up? Let me put my glasses on. Here. Oh, he's still in his relationship, Paula. The curtains are up. Every time they leave them, they take the curtains. I don't know what it is. Poor Sean. Mike, Mike, do you have any other questions to ask Paula? Um, do you really like Mike Wright? Is that a rumor? I love Mike Wright. How can you not like Mike Wright? No, how could you not like him? Everyone, you got to be nice to the seniors. He's a good guy, though. He's a funny guy. Yes, he is. You know what? He's got a dry, sense of humor, but he is a funny guy. He is. And he barely has any voice left. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. What happened to him? He, the guy used to be able to speak through, and now you hear him. Oh, you wonder if he's got a mouse in there. It's gotten worse over the years. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, it's gotten worse. Yeah, it has. You know, I, he'll be back to Woodbine soon, right? <laughs> Leroy, when will you be back? That, let me ask that question. Next week. Next week, and when will Patrick be back? Um, not probably till maybe the twentieth or something like that. Okay, okay. Cause it's starting to fill in, hey eh? Jen. Did you notice it was busier there? Yeah, getting busier. Yeah, I mean, I was a little busy trying not to fall down and stuff, so you know. <laughs> So Patrick, well, then that's great. coming off like a thirty-year layoff, to walking hot. Okay, I I was lucky that I stayed upright. Oh, I'm. It's hard to get up. Never mind. Go and walk them. What time were you there at? 
Oh no, I get up early. I get up. I was there at five thirty or five. Oh, you're an early bird, are you? Oh yeah, no, that was not a problem. It's just you know the whole. The duck cleaning guy. He's a little loud getting ready for work. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I told him to turn the light off. Why? 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 Well, don't wake her up in the morning. <laughs> oh, oh my God, God. Mike! Yeah, Patrick, Pat, Patrick's gonna be in Florida from next week. Patrick's gonna be right. Is he riding down there, Leroy? Or just going to work on his tan. Riding. <laughs> riding. Riding. Yeah. I well, just, I can't I, wait I, to I, see I, him. I just got a call for him that just now too. I, I got a call for a couple of calls for him already down there. Oh, you're busy, eh, B Roy? Yes. I'm just night. like Paula. Wow. <laughs> well, no, I, I got it about about seven, seven twenty. Well, I can say through experience when I was in Tampa, I seen Paula was a very popular agent and a person. Oh. And she runs her business well. And, and like she said, she's got the gift of gab. Leroy, you can see it. She she can communicate with any kind of livestock that we got present tonight. Sean, uh, you know, he's a, little, he's a little wild, that Sean, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, Paula does a great job. And she has her stats are good, you know what I mean? And I'm, I, Like with the two writers she has, she does a wonderful job with them. Oh, well, she's got some, like she said, she's got real right. Three jocks, three jocks, sorry. The well, I know, yeah, has, first time in my life, I've been an agent since 2010, and this is the first time I've ever had three jockeys. <laughs> so this is a new experiment, but I'm a, I'm a Mike, it. Mike, she weighs 88 pounds, Mike. 88, 88 pounds. Her, her new jockey weighs 88 pounds. Yeah. And she won the first race today. Although, you know, I, I didn't notice, actually. I was just reading the chart. Uh, no, it was the first race of the card, but it wasn't her first one. No, no, but I mean, it's the chart says she fell, she fell off after the on the backside. Yeah, no, she did after the race when she pulled up and she came back to come home. The horse ducked, like took a duck step, and she just lost wow. her. Came off. I know what feeling is. I know she what did I a is. Sean. She did a Sean, Mike. She did. Yeah, a yeah, Sean. That's how yeah. Sean gallops out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, the okay. Sean. Sean well, Sean rode a like an amateur race on on Barbados Gold Cup day last year, and everybody was all excited to watch him ride this race. And the horse won easy, and you know Sean's going past the post, yeah, 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 woo! And just as the film is ending, whoop, he falls off in a big tumble. <laughs> yes, like that. <laughs> Well, so, yeah, credit, so we, we bug him about that frequently. We little, bring it up once in a while. To my little jockey's credit, um, the trainer told her uh, when she got back to the paddock, you know, after she came off, oh, this horse does that all the time. And she was like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh great. Yeah, great. Yeah, I got the same thing. Oh, he does it all the time. I said, so you know where to tell Thank me. Thank you yeah. for telling me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah the, the dirt tastes good, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And how many so, races has she win, Paula? Three. Today was her three? third. Yeah, she's only had like 20, 25 mounts. 25 mounts, yeah? Yeah. Beautiful. And what was her, like, what got her to come to the racetrack? She randomly, her brother worked at McDonald's, and someone told him that he needed to be a jockey because he was small, and then he went and did that, exactly that. And then she just kind of followed his footsteps. She's not a racetrack kid. Like she doesn't really, she's never been on the racetrack. Yeah. But she just went to the jockey school and now she's a jockey. Well, excellent. That's excellent, right? Because yeah. like we were, you guys were hey, saying hey, earlier, the generation gotta, now, it's hard to get people. Her teacher, this is a win picture of mine. Uh, wait, how do you see it? Yeah, Come over a little bit. Okay, I can see it now. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. The jockey in there is uh, Willie Lozano. This is a hundred thousand dollar stake race that I won as a trainer. Oh. At Prescott, and the jockey is Willie Lozano, who was my exercise rider at the time. Uh, wow. Will Martinez spun me. Thank you. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so his, his agent, his agent said, "Don't worry, I'll find you a jockey." I said, "I don't need you to find me a jockey. My exercise boy is going to ride the horse." And he's like, wow. "What?" And I'm like, my size boy was a jockey. He just wasn't getting any good mounts. Uh, 
And he knew her and I said, I I'm going to ride him. And he's like, oh, you can't do that. Yeah, I can. So I did. Well, now that was her teacher at the school. Oh, so he's, yeah. He's, oh, he's wow. The one, wow. He, yeah. Wow. So he's, he's the one that I've been communicating with. And when I called and inquired about her, he was like, why are you inquiring about her? Just curious, you know? And I said, well, craziest thing happened to me. Uh, Tom Stiff, my agent friend from Maryland, my, like one of my closest friends, he's, he's had the Eclipse Award winning bug rider last two or three years in a row. Action yeah. Perception, um, Jaron Barbosa. I think before that, um, Charlie Marquez even. That, anyway, he's had several Eclipse Award winning jockeys that he got from Puerto Rico. And he said, you need to take one. You need to take one. <clears throat> And I wasn't going to do it because I didn't want the problem, you know, having three jockeys and aggravating my other guys that I already had. It's, it, but he finally talked me into it. So I, I said, well, I'll take one. I'll take a girl because she's not a girl is not going to interrupt their business or aggravate them. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I called over there. I, I saw this little girl walking up there. They had like the graduation ceremony where they all walked up an escalator. And there was like six girls in the jockey school. And I said, I want that one. I, she walked up that escalator. She had a presence about her, a confidence, but not a cockiness, a kind way on her face. Like there was just something about her. So I called Willie Lozano, who's in my wind picture right there. And uh, I said, what about this girl? And he goes, why did you pick her? I said, I don't know. There's something about her I like. And he said, well, you pick the right one because she's our favorite student. And so wow. then it went from there. And wow. she, he already, she actually already had another agent lined up and, and he, he told her, he said, no, you have to go with my girl, Paula. She's going to take care of you. So, <clears throat> Well, I, 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 I hope that it all works out for you. I really do. Yeah. Why? Well, I, and I for, her. for her, because I don't care about me at this point for that. I'm making good money with my other two jobs. I just want her to, I just want her life to go in the right direction. Wow. And that's the truth. That's great. Well, that's yeah, nice. Do you have to get her, like, I mean, does she have any family here with her? Or you're taking, she's going to Presque Isle, and you sort of have to have her under your wing, I she, guess? She's 22 years old, and she, she's got a cosmetology license, so she's she can do hair and, you know, nails. Oh, wow. and stuff. So she can Same do as Leroy. Right. <laughs> she, she's, been, she's, <laughs> she's been a person that knows how to make her way, is what I'm saying. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I kind of do have to definitely take her under my wing, but she's very close with her mother. They're very, very close. And her mother, she lives an hour from here. She drives an hour every day to get here, actually. She lives in Brandon, and we're in Oldsmar. So but so she has some street smarts. Yeah, she does. I mean, she she does a little bit. Yeah. Well, beautiful. She, she, you'll, she's you'll, not you'll as crazy and wild as Antonio, you know, like, wow, wow, wow. But... <laughs> Few are, I guess. Few are. <laughs> She's kind of in the middle of Pablo. I've got a quiet, reserved one, and I've got a wild man, and she's in the middle somewhere. Uh oh, uh, Mike Wright has uh, joined oh, the conversation. Uh, Gina, give him the phone. Yeah, <laughs> black just got a new toupee. <laughs> Paula, he's just showing off because you're on the show. That's all. <laughs> He knows how to do it, though. He knows all the right things to say. Oh, yeah. did I ever tell you about the story? He took me out on a... He said, Dunzel, get dressed up. I'll take you out on the town. I'll show you all the airline stewardess. This is the best place in town. So, Paula, I got all scrubbed up and cleaned myself up and went with him. We had a nice roast beef dinner. I think I might have paid. And then we <laughs> took me to this bar. I probably did pay. And we took me to this bar. We opened the door. There were three girls in there, one in a wheelchair and two in them uh, walkers. And I said, champ, this is it? This is it, champ? Ask them about that story, Paula. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a hot wife, though. <laughs> oh, you're not kidding. I think she likes me, Paula. Oh, my God. No. no. Wait, no, Sean, Mike. you're not the only Casanova on the show. No, Mike. Don't go in there, Mike. <laughs> Don't go there. You know what? Control Mike Wright. Show. Mike Wright's like a father to me, Paula. All kidding aside, he's like a father to me. He really is. Mm -hmm. and Jen, you know yeah. the old story about Mike Wright and Audrey Capacetti, and I was their offspring. <laughs> <laughs> you know the story, Jen. We don't have to bring it up every episode. Yeah. Mike, I hate to do this to you, but Mike Wright doesn't look old enough to be your dad. 
Oh my God. Did, Leroy, did you tell her I just got off the fetch list? Yeah. <laughs> All right, huh? Paul, I've been out eating grass grazing for a while. You know what I mean? It's about time. I'm due for own. worming. I'm due for worming, Paula. I probably am too. <coughs> my brooms haven't curried on me in a while, Paula. Give me a break. Oh my gosh. Somebody about- do something with the lighting here. She can't be seeing me right. <laughs> you got to about- a hole in your head. It's about look, look, somebody look, at, I, look at the haircut I got. My new girlfriend told me this was the look. I, I think she's trying to <laughs> it's the take me off the shelf. <laughs> I tell you what, Paula, I've had a pleasure, and, and I'm glad Mike Wright got to use the phone tonight. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I tell you that right now. Seriously, most of the guests I just make it up. I mean it. <laughs> That, you know what? That hits my heart in all the right ways. <laughs> well, that's what I'm here for. I'm not not only the candy on the show, right? Oh, my God. I'll tell you what. But it, it goes to show you, everybody on the racetrack's got a story, and it's a great journey. It is the truth. We heard Jen's j- journey of Monday. <laughs> right? <laughs> We've heard Leroy got a clippers and shaved, and Sean still got the curtains. It's all a journey. <laughs> Hey, I got to hey, listen, Paul, I got to give a shout out. I hate to do this to a good friend of mine, Ned. Ned, he's in he's, he's in Florida. He works for Marty Drexler. Yeah. If I don't say hi to this guy, he'll bother me forever, Paula. I'm sorry to interrupt. I know your time's important, but we got to say hi to Ned. My time is not important. I'm My time is your time right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, Leroy, let me wipe the tears away from my eyes. <laughs> this is emotional, show. Paul, I've been away for so long and to come back to this great show. <laughs> they just and let you on for the moment, too, didn't they? They didn't, you know, like they just kind of let you in, snick, snuck you right in. Yeah. Yeah, it's every once in a while it's that producer. He's not a big fan of mine, Paula. <laughs> <laughs> I've had problems with him before. I thought it was at Neil Wilson, the agent at, at uh, Woodbine, because they call him the Hammer, and the producer's name's Hammer. So for yeah. about a year, I thought it was Neil Wilson. Then one day at the racetrack, I said to Neil, hey, why do you always put me in the bottom left? He didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> he didn't have a clue. Yeah. Wrong guy. Yeah, that, well, that happened to me quite a bit. Nor- normally, it's the wrong husband. I mean, uh, <laughs> don't fool you, Paul. I look better than it's the it's distance. <laughs> Oh my gosh, he is wired for sound, isn't he? Oh, Jen, I haven't been out in a long time. <laughs> Glad we got out of the house or out of the, you know, out of the den. Now yeah. I'm back out a little bit now. I'm, I've been going to the barn in the mornings. You are. Oh, How we're many? ready, Leroy. We're getting them. We're getting them ready, Leroy. How well, many you I, got in? Uh, thirteen right now. Oh, geez. Okay, that's a I lot. I've yeah, been, I've been I've been calling and inquiring, so I got an inside scoop in the barn already. I got my inside person already talking to them, so I know what's going on. You know who's over there? Yes, I know who's over there. So I already I got said to the owner today, I'm surprised that Leroy hasn't called me. I He's sent your, I, I, he knows what's going on. I, I already got my inside scoop, but I texted you last week. You didn't respond to my text, so and I called oh, you. Didn't Leroy, respond. I tell you, they had me medicated so bad, buddy, I could barely get up. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what's going on already. I talked to one of the grooms and everything, so I have an idea of what's going on. So I'm keeping track of what's going on, and I know what to put in the book and what not to put in the book. Do you know? Do you know? I hired Red Pants back. You know the guy for Josie Carroll, your guy. Yeah. And, and the other the other day he didn't show up for work, Leroy. So the next morning he's giving me the story. He says, "Listen, a long time ago I had an assault charge, and I got a, a, a I'm not allowed to be around this guy. And I lent my car out, and the guy parked by his house, and they phoned the police and come got me. He was halfway through the story, and I said, "Son, you know I don't believe you, right? <laughs> <laughs> let's just tell the truth. You had a couple, and you didn't want to get up. <laughs> let's, be, let's be honest." <laughs> <laughs> so he started he started he started it already mike yeah and i every day i say to him don't worry leroy will be back soon you can go back and see leroy <laughs> <laughs> leroy you didn't teach him how to put bandages on he's listening right now you know that <laughs> <laughs> I'll, well, I'll there's something a- like the beginning of a, a new racing season the one thing about woodbine paula and i'm sure you know this is that you know 
we sit idle here from. Uh, oh, I know all about that. The second week of December, and mm -hmm. you know, just waiting for April twenty seventh to roll around, and then it's a very long season. But you know, it's like all winter. You know, we're just sort of twiddling our thumbs, especially those of us who have to stay up here in the snow. I love yeah. it. <laughs> all, all the people from Woodbine, though. It seems like it's it's a wonderful family. Like. It seems like you guys are all a part of each other, regardless. Yeah, of, it might be a little this or that, but it seems like everybody really, really looks out for each other. Yeah, uh, yeah. See, we're, we're putting a good show on. <laughs> what, did, what did you say? I said we're putting a good show on. <laughs> there's, no, there's the all same. a bit into that one. <laughs> there, there's the same thing with us. I mean, in Erie, most of the trainers, I would say two thirds of the trainers. At least half of them now. It used to be more. It used to be probably three quarters, but probably now it's between half and two thirds of the trainers and the people that work there are idle all winter. They they lay up. They go to farms, turn their horses okay. out. You know the whole the the same thing as you. So when like right now we're gearing up for Erie, and I just met some of my friends, and we were in a house at Rainbow River, and I could tell they were gearing up. Everybody's gearing up. You know, it's the new the new meet, and they're getting out of the house, and they're starting yeah. to train horses and so i understand it's like it's like a little bit of cabin fever spring fever oh, yeah. well, you got you got ryan walsh down here and there's another trainer down here too you had two pascal guys are down here at ryan walsh is at woodbine no at, at um oh turfway turfway oh yeah oh yeah glenn wismer sent a really nice couple horses over there too and tim girton is there yes is tim is here too yes yes he He's my he's my main client at uh, Prescott for the summer. I was yeah. just with him yesterday at the at the River House. Okay. Yeah. yeah now, Ren, Ren, Ren is keeping his horses here, but he's shipping them up and running. I guess coming back. Yeah. From what I'm understanding from from him. Yeah, I have, a, I have a question I'm curious about because uh, you have these you know I know you have three riders, but you have these two accomplished men jockeys. You're at Tampa Colonial Downs, whatever. Do they have a preference, and do you have a preference, dirt versus tapita? Good question. Um, that is a great question. I think that if Pablo had his favorite surface to ride on, it would be tapita. So I'm going to say that for him. Uh, the little girl doesn't know nothing yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. She's only been on one surface, and that's dirt. Yeah. Uh, Antonio... I would say that he, I would, uh, I would definitely say that he shines the most. I, the guy, the guy's very versatile. Yeah. I don't know what his, like Pablo's favorite surface, I would say for himself is, is, is Tapita. But my favorite surface to watch Pablo ride on is dirt. That's my sure. preference. And he's got the highest win percentage every year here at Tampa on the turf. So it's just like, that's kind of a loaded question. Uh, yeah. That's my stance on him, uh, Gallardo. I would say that he likes every surface equally, but I would say that most people, and Kathleen O'Connell is the one that told me this, uh, you're really not giving him his just due unless you put him on the grass because he he just he's from Europe. He's got a European background. They know how to ride the grass. And then, you know, obviously when we went to Colonial and he was leading rider there and we really went there with basically nothing, <laughs> I think his talent uh, – showed that his his surface is probably that but he you know you guys watched him at woodbine he's pretty yeah versatile. yeah i would say if you asked him what his favorite surface to ride on it would be turf well turf is certainly uh very popular at woodbine now because we have two grass courses uh yeah. do you think there's something to be said for i mean do you think tapita is is safer than dirt i i i don't know the answer to that but i do know the statistics at our track and we have the least amount of breakdowns per capita all year for many, 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 many years in a row at our track. And I think the Golden Gate track was kind of the same following suit with us. So statistically wise, I think it's there's something to it for sure. I mean, yeah. we just don't have like the we don't have the catastrophic knock on wood injuries. Yeah. And those those two tracks, those two tracks still has the, the, the force um, surface that came up. 
Because what yeah. might change there is, but those two tracks still has the, the same poly, right? Yeah, and Gulfstream, if you wanted, if you wanted to take down like the stats from Gulfstream, it's the new Tapita. It's the one that doesn't change colors. Your guys' this doesn't change colors either, right? See, we got the new one too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah ours, that doesn't change colors. Yeah. Ours turned black. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it, it it grabs the heat, but yeah. Um, but I I think the Gulfstream surface has been very kind to horses as far as. Oh. The, I love it. It's beautiful. The number of breakdowns, the number of injuries. I think I, yeah. I think there is something to the tapita surface. Definitely. Well, the same thing down here too, because we have the tapita here at, at, at Turfway also. Yeah. And you, well, you, you the know. first one they laid down at Turfway had a lot of sand in it. I think they've changed it since then, though, because I, I I don't see the sand flying up like I used to at Turfway. That surface used to be just full of sand. Yeah. Is Prestile a, a deeper poly track there? Or, or, is it deeper? I would I wouldn't say it's deeper because it's a fast track, but it's thick. It's very clumpy. And okay. Thick. Okay. Yeah. 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 I see a lot of horses race with no hind shoes there. Yeah, or no shoes at all. Yeah. Several really? trainers race with no shoes, and yeah. they're very successful doing that. So. It's yeah, some sticky. real real name trainers too. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's quite sticky. Huh. Or it balls up probably with the shoe, so they're thinking about the shoe it, that it just it, it just it's it 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 gathers together. I wouldn't say that it necessarily sticks in their feet, but it, it gathers together. I don't know how to explain it, but it's it's definitely thick, but not not yeah. deep, I wouldn't say. I would just say thick. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's a good way to explain it. Thank you. Marianne DeGan says she thinks that synthetic surfaces make a horse who has issues too sore to carry on prior to them breaking down, which is a good thing. So I guess, I guess, uh, yeah. So she's saying that they, they, they won't continue on mm. and they, they, therefore they won't break down. So. Well, Through I know, my I know experience. Sure hind end takes a beating like high, yeah. high, high back and hind end takes a beating on the synthetic surfaces after they train on it for a significant amount of time. That's where your problems are. Yeah, I, I see. Now you go back to the dirt courses of me as a kid growing up around the racetrack. Uh, a cracked tibia was one out of a million. And now I see with the, the tibia, it's more cases are diagnosed with tibia problems from it. So mm -hmm. you, it, that's that's my own opinion. So it, it has each and or. I think it's a great surface to race on because you're running on the equal surface each time you run, right? no matter yeah, what the weather it can rain and you're still running like because the mud you, you know what i mean it, it, it took a lot of strain on horses too right it mystifies me because there's no slide to it and maybe that's why the no shoes helps a little bit because it, the, the feet don't slide they stick and and it, it's also mystifying to me because it's pavement underneath it so that just to me that just logically doesn't make sense for a better surface but it has statistically proven to be a better surface yeah yeah, you're right. And I think the jockeys like it better, too, with the kickback. No, or... My jockeys love riding on it. They love mm -hmm. it. Like I said, if you ask Pablo, I'm sure that he would say Prescott was his favorite surface. And they use less goggles now. Yeah. we got to look at the positive, Leroy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, you have a ghost in your room, Paula. Something's moving on the side there. She's got a duck cleaning guy, too? Oh, yeah. this, <laughs> this, yeah. it's, John, it's, get my it's a lazy season and it's kind of just oh it's a lazy okay i was like yeah my like, elbow like, keeps hitting it <laughs> <laughs> did we hear a dog barking early in the show yeah yes she did because my lovely boyfriend mark hoffman kept just running the dogs all around distracting me i couldn't even think straight <laughs> leroy see how she worked in her boyfriend but mike <laughs> My, she made sure Sean didn't hit on her. Uh, it's good play, Paula. Good thinking. <laughs> oh God! Sean can hit on me all he wants. He's pretty cute. You, you, we got to put uh, a set of Paula. Big, now yeah, that's yeah. enough. Here, take my, my glasses, Mike. <laughs> we got to put a set of gazes on you. Set of full cup blinkers on you. You see a little too much, eh? Oh, I spot a lot of that, Leroy. You'd be amazed what I see. <laughs> he does need oh. some blinkers. Yes, he oh. does. <laughs> Blinkers and a tongue strap, right, Paula? <laughs> now, and a okay, helmet. <laughs> and a helmet, yeah. I need one of them chipping helmets. 
but since we're on the topic of talking about, you know, putting mm-hmm. Peter tracking the, the injuries and stuff like that, and Mar- Marianne was talking about the stuff that that, that um, blanket she has. See, Marianne has a blanket there. The beamer. The beamer. The beamer. Is it the beamer blanket? Beamer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, I want to promote that a little bit in the in on the show where we're here mm-hmm. talking about injuries and soreness and stuff with the torpedo track, you know what I mean? Because this blanket seemed to be doing wonders. And if Marianne can just, you know, enlighten us a little bit with something she's got there that she can put up for us that we can read a little bit about it, because it's so important that, you know, we're just talking about the, the, the horse racing game, but at the same time, you know, they're taking care of these animals and they do so much for us. You know what I mean? Because again, you guys are talking about the poly track. And the one thing that I always hear people talk about this poly track, because the surface, the 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 pony comes up high on the horses and still it stays low. Am I right about that? What I'm saying, Mike? Yes, you're correct. You're correct on that. Paula, so, do you know anything about this beamer blanket? Have you ever used one? I have not used one, but um, I've got a good friend that's a trainer, Maria Bowersock, and she uses it on like all of like, I, almost everybody at Prescott uses the crap out of them. I mean, oh. really uses them. The beamer blankets, they've got beamer boots. There's Beamer everything, and they they all swear by them. So I believe that it definitely is a big benefit. Mm. I mean, Uh, the Maria's blanket costs five thousand dollars. I don't think she'd want to go out and spend five thousand unless she was sure it worked. That's just my guess. (laughs) Wow. Oh, you're right. You're right. And I I I see a lot of people even the blue magnetic magnetic blankets. So I I never used to believe in them. Now I think they they do they do work. Well, the the theory behind them, and it's not a theory; it's facts. They draw anytime you draw blood to an area, it, it's healing something. So, the more blood you draw to an area, and magnets and like magnetic pulse and all the all the stuff that those blankets do is just drawing blood flow. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you're healing, so it's circulate, it's, it's causing more circulation it's, for the for the for the body, then it's causing right. a lot more circulation, and also some of them heat up like the beamer blanket heats up an area which you know can relax the muscles i it's just it can't it can't be bad mm-hmm. no and anything that we're trying to help them right like that's yeah the thing, I, right? I, like i said i have friends that really swear by them so and the magna wave machine i've got tons i've got really good friends that do that all all day for horses and they swear by that so well i've seen that the, the, the vibrators or the rockers that, that they stand the horse on it some of the barns, there's a couple of trainers I know that have it in the middle of their barn and they stand it on the vibration. I think that's a great thing too, right? Where yeah. they vibrate. Leroy, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Cassie's got one yeah. in his center. Did you read, read Marianne's go, text? Go ahead. Beamers stand for bioelectric magnetic energy regulation. Beamer specifically targets microcirculation and helps that's balance. balance. Sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. Now that makes a lot of sense. So, and there yeah. you go. Good thing. So you know. Now, but oh, Lori Gula, it? the jockey, oh. she wants to know that she's because she's half made of half metal, <laughs> holding her together. Would it be safe for her, or would it electrocute her and make her no, hair it's... even worse than it already is? <laughs> no, it actually doesn't heat up. It, it's the body natural um, creating heat so because heat of the increase in, in in circulation. circulation. So it's good for humans also then, Marianne. Is it is that right, Marianne? Would you say yeah. it's great for human also? Of course. Yeah, I think so. That's what she said, because I was complaining okay. about how sore I was. That's she right. She said yeah. I needed so, a femur treatment. Yeah. Okay. They got some for humans too. Okay. So so Mike, you know, Marianne is is on the track and stuff like that. So in case you need something done, you know, you can give her a call, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I was supposed to Marianne came last year and I just I, I was so busy, Leroy. I had so many horses last year. Me and her kept crashing, crossing wires. We just didn't hook up. But I, I am. I got a horse that I would really. I'm serious. I'm going to talk to her about because I would like to see. And it's one of and my I, own, right? Especially now, horses are just first starting. Like, like, like um, Jim yeah, saying, because just started back, so your muscles get sore and stuff like that. Yeah. Muscles that weren't, you know what I mean. So it's, that's so important. They're just too. like us, right, Lee? Right? Yeah, yeah. No, definitely, definitely. So, it's and that's why but, you keep working all winter. Well, so yeah, you don't want to have that muscle problem. No, and I'm in the gym every day after work too. Yeah, we know you're not doing it for the money. No, <laughs> you had a good enough year, didn't he, Sean? There you go. <laughs> I got I got to stay on top of things. I got two writers that I got to keep active, Mike. If I don't, is no, is this not 
coming down here and working. I'm, and you know, a mm-hmm. lot of trainers I'm talking to and stuff like that. I'd like to bring one of my writers down here next year. I'll tell you that. Who, who's, who, who do you have besides Patrick, Leroy? Sahin Savachi. Oh. Yeah. So nice. Sahin is nominated for a Sovereign Award this year for the first time. He's come, he sort of uh, rose he was to the, the bug ranks. Boy, right? The bug boy, I'm still waiting on his paperwork to be done. So eventually yeah. he's going to be out too. So that's another yeah. thing. So I'll have three too. So yeah. So. Sahin, Sahin uh, went flying through the, from like, he came from British Columbia and then he just went flying right up to second place in the jock standings last year. Just uh, amazing. Mm. Well, I have to comment that it's the results of the, the the wonderful trainers and support that I have that really helped me with that. So I have to, you know, a lot of thanks to them that and you know helping me out with that. So well, that's hey. that's the backing that you've you've you know become like like I said earlier, my friends and the people that help me. You can't you can't do it without them. And no, you can't. No, you you love them as friends, but they also help you. So it's a good it's a good thing. No, definitely, definitely. So, so being uh, a social love- butterfly, it helps you in anything, right? It does. Mm-hmm. It really yeah. does. Yeah. I wouldn't have got on this gig if I didn't know Sean. <laughs> <laughs> you don't I think they were – anybody I else on, on the team voted me on, do you, Paula? There's <laughs> <laughs> my buddy in the top left. Appreciating people and, and being kind is, is just the way to go, so – it, yeah, it'll no, that's back true. You up all your life if you're like that, I think. That's the truth. That really is. Mike used to do a show when he was in Canada back in the early 2000s, and I became a fan. Oh, then, you're my biggest fan, buddy. Yes, so that's why you're here, Mike. <laughs> and Peter Gaskin. Peter Gaskin was a big fan, too. Uh, I, used to I didn't know he was an agent, Leroy. You didn't tell me. Who? <laughs> <laughs> I so, see I was gonna show those two derby races. Or not oh derby. yeah, yeah. Oh, we can do that. Show, I was hey, Paul. Show, uh, up, up to Paula whether she wants to stick around for the last twenty minutes of the show, or she can wander off if she likes. But I was gonna show two races of horses that are racing in these two big preps coming up this weekend: the Florida Derby and the Arkansas Derby. Let's see it. I'm not going anywhere. I'm having too much. All fun. right. All right, there all you right. go. She's a boy. <laughs> She's now noticing my muscle shirt. Oh. <laughs> took her a while, Leroy. It took her a while. All right, Hammer, you have those have those races ready for us, Hammer? Oh, oh yeah, Hammer. Hopefully you can pick out the one we can show Hades first. So this is uh, we're talking about the Florida Derby coming up at yeah. um Gulfstream on Saturday. Gulfstream. And Hades is the undefeated horse that upset. Oh no! Hang on, hold it! Don't run it yet. Oh, 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 oh hold on, that's hang Oakland. On, okay. Hang on, that's Gulf Oakland. It's okay. Well, then we'll do that one first. So this is okay. the Rebel Stakes, and this okay. is the, the prep for the Arkansas Derby this weekend at Oakland. Uh, this race was won by Timberlake, who is in the seven post, I believe. And I just thought this was very impressive. And he's going to be the big favorite, I think, for the uh, Arkansas. Well, one of the favorites for the Arkansas Derby. Uh, Brad let's Cox take a look again, at, eh? What's that? Uh, Brad Cox again, eh? Uh, yeah, Brad Cox, yeah. Let's watch Let's yeah. watch Timberlake. Because I thought this race, his first race since November, since the Breeders' Cup. was Number really seven, good. right? Here's Woodcourt. Yeah, number seven, yeah. Where okay. Where to go? And uh, they're off in the Rebel Stakes of 2024. From the far outside, Woodcourt put into play early. Carbone up on the pace. Northern Flame has natural speed as well. Carbone, the pacemaker from Northern Flame. And Woodcourt, who's three wide, charging into the turn. The favorite, Timberlake, placed in a perfect position by Christian Torres. Right off the speed stocking today, he's racing alongside of Lagados and Mina, who's down on the inside. Combat defense, four lengths behind in midfield. A length and a half to just steal on a hold. Dymatic alongside of him. Tahoon Pass is third last. The length clear of Magic Grant in a space of four to next level, who's at the back of the pack. They're down the back stretch, and Carbone is paving the way. One of three runners trained by Steve Aspison in this race. Carbone about a length in front. Northern Flame backs off just a little bit in second. Woodcourt is three deep. Common defense down on the inside. He's two lengths off the pace. A length to Timberlake. He's now fifth with Mina. Dymatic, Lagados, Jess Steele. Those three line up. There's seven from the top 
top into the far turn run a gap of two to magic grand passing to hone pass who's dropping back and the trailer is still next level well behind as they round the far turn carbone three furlongs to go a half length in front here northern flame turning up the pressure woodcourt is three wide there goes timberlake and the wind star white he's caught about four wide off the turn just steel going to be deep at the top of the lane he's five wide off the turn and common defense trying to slip through down at the rail he's going to find the narrowest of openings timberlake on the outside roars to the front common defense trying to pull off the upset and northern flame timberlake drifting to the center of the track but he's clear coming on common defense but timberlake's gonna do it and timberlake and christian torres win the rebel by two and a nice effort to kick off his three-year-old season common defense was second northern flame third photo for fourth oh so that's, he's that's number all. he's number two in the Arkansas Derby, which is a pretty good field going a mile and eighth on Saturday. But I like that uh, I like that effort. I thought you know I know we had a good spot, but he's had horses on the inside and the outside of him, and I thought you know he still had to work for it. Had to go four wide. Mm. Um, he also took a long time down the stretch to switch leads, so he may still be a little green or you know yeah. just whatever. But I, I thought it was a very good performance. But that was his first race off of last year, right? That was his first race off of last year. So a little, you know. I'm totally curious, though, as to what the deal is here. Christian Torres rode him. And uh, Flavian Pratt's riding him in the Arkansas Derby. So I don't know what's, I don't know. Christian Torres is on a Steve Asmussen horse that was behind Timberlake. So I don't know. They they, They likely made a move. The, the owners and trainer and that happens you know them can win a big race but then when you go to the bigger race they want the bigger jockey <laughs> we know all about that don't we <laughs> yeah. yeah i guess i guess that, i don't know i always find that weird but whatever i mean the guy wrote him pretty pretty great so he did he wrote um, him pretty good yeah so now the florida derby is very interesting on saturday at gulfstream because fierceness who was you know won the breeders cup juvenile with 105 buyer figure and then just pooped out, pooped the bed in the uh, Holy Bull. We're going to show the Holy Bull now. Hammer, if you can show the other one. And this is this weird Holy Bull where it was not much of a field and Hades went slow on the pace and Fierceness broke slow and John Velazquez is throwing the lines at him coming out of the gate. Well, let's just watch here and um, we'll watch the Holy Bull. And they're off in the 33rd running of the Holy Bull. Fierceness was away mid-flight, and Johnny V's riding him for some forward position as the inside trio race on with it. And Fagled and Hades, 1-2. Otello is next. Into the clear goes Fierceness, but he has to go four wide. On the far outside, it's C-Streak. Well settled at the rail is domestic product. The early trailer is the long shot dancing groom. Around the clubhouse turn they go. The leader is Hades in front three parts of a length. In Vagel's in the middle and out three wide goes Fierceness. On a hold behind the speed is Domestic Product fourth at the inside. Then C Streak and Otello. Out the back the trailer is Dancing Groom. The opening quarter complete. Hades has the lead. And Vagel right alongside in second. Three wide. Fierceness bides his time. He's now third. C Streak is on the far outside. He's racing in fourth. So no breather for Fierceness as he has a horse on his outside. Back from the inside, that's domestic product to race together with Otello, and the trailer is Dancing Groom. They make their way to the first finish line in the 2024 Holy Bull, and Hades has the lead. On the outside, Fierceness starts to shift gears, and there he goes, Fierceness for a neck advantage. Hades tries to counterpunch with the benefit of the inside, four wide sea streak, and Vagled hanging tough from between horses. Another two lengths back to Domestic Product, and dropping back to last is Dancing Groom, just ahead of him, Otello. Fierceness not out of second gear yet. They went three quarters, and Fierceness goes to the first finish line, trying to put Hades away. Gaffleon getting a response from Domestic Product, and it's time to go to work for the two-year-old champ. Fierceness is off the turn, but he's not home yet, as Hades is dead game and battling back. Off cover, Domestic Product is charging hard. 16th to go, Fierceness coming up empty now. Hades has the lead. Domestic Product is out of time. DJ Stables, Hades wins the Holy Bull under Paco Lopez from Domestic Product second. Fierceness, he was empty. He finished third, 146 left. <laughs> He was empty. 
<laughs> wow. Champion Cyril. Champion Cyril. He was empty. Thanks. Okay, we know he's empty. So what do we do now? What 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 fierceness do we get in the Florida Derby? But let's look at it this way, Jen. He ran in November 3rd, right? And came and ran here. So I mean Brad Cox horse was more ready than him, but I mean, let's say that he needed that one. Yeah, yeah, I would agree there, Lee, right? One, I don't know. I mean, it's not that it's not that usual that Todd Fletcher horses need one, but yeah, that's true. He's I, I can take my eyes off Hades. Wow, what a performance that was! Holy moly! Mm. Yeah, I mean, he was under pressure, heavy pressure. He got passed multiple times ahead here, ahead there, and you know, Paco with his usual loose rein, you don't know how much horse he has or does. Oh my god! <laughs> but uh, he's so I, hard to watch. He was really hard for me to watch at the end of that race. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like dropping the lines, and you know, he's just like that. He's, he's either bunched up or there's no line. Can't the take office. it away from him because them horses that I mean, they just. But, but yeah, wow, that yeah. the winner was hard not to watch. I mean, his ears went up, his ears went back. Yeah. I didn't know where yeah. he was at any time. To be honest, what a great performance! Yeah, wow. Leroy is a fan of Hades. He's been talking about him for a while. The monster. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. love that horse. You know, that's the horse I've been keep asking about all the time. And he, had, to... he actually got faster, it seemed like. Like, the last 20 yards, I mean, like, he extended. It was weird. Yeah. That was yeah. a yeah. race. That horse, maybe, maybe that's a lot of untapped potential there. Maybe he's just barely doing what he needs to do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that no, was a good race on Saturday. Yeah, I'm not taking take nothing away from fairness because he got pinballed even the gate to and again knock around like that is not easy either, right? He did yeah, not have not, anything not, his own way. I, yeah, I appreciated that, yeah. that that horse ran really well and like you said, yeah. been off, you know, hard to. Yeah, yeah you know, it's just yeah. a matter of does the horse need things to go a lot softer and smoother for him to do well, or does he? Yeah not like a little bit of adversity right so yeah. well i think yeah. he, I, he had a bit of adversity also being off the bench and it's, he had a lot of things yeah. not going in his direction that time so yeah and he did he did coming off a of seven eighths and going a mile and an eighth and still run a big race too that's why i kind of okay. like that horse so much you know now he's gonna go a little further now too right yeah the pressure that he was under for that whole race though to continue on and then to kind of have a little kick at the end was pretty impressive me yeah yeah you know, Hades. So, yeah no it's, it's, it's interesting uh, you know it's gonna be a and good race mike's got his brother brad walking around behind him there yeah i got no duck cleaner here jen <laughs> he just come and drop me off some i got some stats here now i just going going over at where leroy can spin me early i'm just figuring it out now paula sorry guys <laughs> but Mike, my Mike, job's Mike, never done either he paula will do it with love if he has to spin you he will do it with love i promise you that <laughs> you call it love is that what you call it eh <laughs> no nope, we here in canada call it home block <laughs> That's they just like to spin the smaller outfits we hate it but it's still oh my it's part you, of it. you tell him paula you tell him that, he knows tough. he know he knows i love him absolutely <laughs> Well, you now know, we had somebody comment uh, wishing uh, Sean luck with Temple Dancer. Are you racing uh, Sun Saturday, uh, Sean? Yeah, he's racing. Temple. Oh, God. Here we go again. Excited. Here we go again. No enthusiasm at all. None Jen, whatsoever. Can... Hey, uh, Sean, before you talk about your horse, I got to ask Jen one quick question because she'd be able to tell me this. What happened with the Tampa Bay situation with the Power the par Mutuals on that day? Oh, what was the outcome of that? What What was the problem? What happened? Mm. Well, they, I mean, I, I assume the investigation is still going on, but I mean, it was uh, some sort of communication, you know, glitch or something that, uh, you know, everything shut down. It wasn't just Tampa. There was other tracks that were affected by some sort of communication delay signals, whatever. But there were I two mean, or three other tracks that had the same issue that, that, that had no betting on the race. Uh, they couldn't. They couldn't get it worked out. Yeah. Wow. Well, it was I mean, a tow. It was a tow problem. An yeah. Amtote. It was. It was tow problem. Yeah. Well, it was an Amtote. You know, Amtote is the company that the tote board. It. It was. It was. It was that problem with them. Some problem. Mm. With Tampa. Them. Tampa lost like four million dollars in wagering. Oh, it was. That, yeah, that was. An, that was my other question. I was. How big of a hit was it? Four it million? was a huge hit. It might have even been more, and I can guarantee you that the 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 powers that be, like 
Mr. Peep Ruby, I, I, I can tell you, was not happy. And poor guy, not, nothing you can do, though. Wow. There's no, no recall, right? It's good that they ran the race without betting because you can't keep them walking around there for like They walked hour. around for a long time trying to fix it. They finally had to just call the yeah. shot. Yeah. I give Tampa credit for doing that, running the race for the horsemen and the horses and, the, you know, yep. the people. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. But that kind now, of money, uh, losing yeah. that kind of money, wow. Sean's running on Saturday, but he doesn't seem overly enthused about it. Well, he's won one race in his life, dear, and, um, you know, he, he's he's temple dancer. He's not Come a on, star. spit it out. Don't, don't, you sound like you're choking there. You can't talk or something. <laughs> he's not a star. He's not a star. <laughs> I have to, but you I can make him a make star. Him. I don't think so, sir. See, look, here's no. somebody telling you best of luck with Temple Dancer. Thank you. Yeah, you're getting people well, cheering you. That's the you. last trainer. <laughs> <laughs> the horse has a nice name, though. Hey, Paul, he's got a beautiful name. Paula, I don't know if you followed the Gold Cup there they had in Barbados. Um, and I'm you. sure Jen's got it somewhere on the file where I did say on the show that Mr. Ted Holder would win the race. Did I not? Yeah, but he didn't. Yeah. He didn't. Didn't he win the race? It is no. third, man. I okay, told you I banged my head, Leroy. I've been having <laughs> problems. His horse, no, but to I've been congratulating the guy. No, no. His horse did run a good race, though. Let's see. Yeah, sure he ran well. Yeah. Yeah. Chad Brown. Chad Brown. Chad Brown, well. Chad Brown horse won it, yeah. Chad Brown's Chad horse won it. Chad Brown won it? How much is he carrying? Huh. How, much, how much weight is your horse carrying, Sean? He's carrying 112 pounds. Oh, you got a bug rider on? Yeah. No. Need, hey, have, um, have, can we get Paula know, Ryder down? Can we get Paula no, Ryder to come down and ride 88 pounds? <laughs> you know who's right next? Sue Sue. Sue Sue, Sue man. My girl Sue Sue. Cassandra. Oh, the, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Cassandra. Good. You guys have a very, very hot, hot, hot riding bug rider at your track, Sophie Vives. Yeah. Ooh. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. Yes. You know what? Yes. She can ride a little bit too. She's got oh, some talent. She does. I, 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 I've heard her agent talking to her on the phone when, like, he's at my track and he's there for the day, and she listens. She's a good girl. Like, she can take some constructive criticism. Like, she's a, she's a smart girl. I like her. Mm -hmm. And she's yeah. a little wasted, cute doll. Yeah. Baby. yeah, she is. Yeah. She is a very she's pretty a young woman and very, very, very professional at her job. And she's up for the summon. She's up for the summons award too, which she will get. Will she win it, Leroy? Yeah, of course, hands down. Well, let's find out who Jen voted for. <laughs> <laughs> Not a secret, eh, Jen? I mean, <laughs> what, what, who else is going to bet her out though? Who's going to beat her to it? I mean, she was like she a the fifth leading rider at Woodbine, for heaven's sakes. I mean, yeah, she, yeah. yeah, she's yeah, yeah. Of, Listen, she went three races for me, so she's got some ability. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and Paula, I'm not scared to knock myself. Mike, why did it take you this long? See, I had to bring her name up. You could have said that the whole time. My girl. Well, Paula, I was working over Jenna. I thought the duck cleaning guy was out of town. I didn't want to mention another girl. Oh, I gotcha. <laughs> Jen, aren't you the lucky one? Oh, you know what? Mike says she's talking Paula, about I didn't Jen. like that. Hey, my, my, I forgot to say to her when I was in Barbados, her boy Joe came up to me and said, I'd let Jen know, you know, he went a race down there too. The first race, I think uh -oh. the first race of the day or something I'm like that. I'm sad. I'm sad. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jen, that guy does like you a lot. That my no. man Joseph? Yeah. I haven't yeah. Seen Joseph, yeah, Joseph yeah, you likes go. you Joseph, a lot. Yeah. Joseph, Joseph. I forgot to mention that last week. I knew there was one fan out there. Yeah, <laughs> no, you got more than one fan. You're they brag about you at Ajax down every time. Anybody I talk about the quarter horses, they always mention your name. You're doing a great that. job for them, too. A great job. How's that going, Jane? How when is it starting to the season and what's going on up yeah, there? We start um, the first Wednesday in May, and um, yeah, we got uh, the dates are all set. We're just you know, horse population is an issue, but um. Mm -hmm. It's got to be better than last year. It can't be worse than last year. But, uh, yeah, no, it's exciting. I'm, but you know what, I, folks? Listen. Sorry, Jen. Go ahead. Go ahead. When are you finish? I know. I was going to say, I love, I love the quarter horse seasons, 25 dates. And uh, it's always got lots of people there, and they love the sport. So it's good. It's yeah. fun. 
we got to give things some props, man. Mike DePaulo for winning that stake race at... Oh, yes, yes. yes. Mike DePaulo winning the stake yeah. at Dolphin on Saturday. The yeah, man. That's a nice horse. That's a yeah. nice horse. Yeah. Three, three, three. Three. Three, 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 yeah. Ontario Stallion Frack Daddy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's uh, headed back home. Uh-huh. And what about Ted's horse? Why, why did Ted's horse run so bad, man? Well, Sean, I mean, look at the speed those horses ran at, though. I mean, you, you that kind was of... That was a that really was, tough sprint race. Yeah, that was a sprint know. race. That wasn't... They, they, weren't, they weren't walking, those guys. I mean, you know, let's talk about that. Um, Nigel's horse ran a big race, the old the old horse. He was third. He was third. He was yeah. third. Yeah, he ran a big ran race. Yes, race. Wow. yes. You know I me, mean? but those guys weren't walking, and Ted uh -huh. Horse couldn't stay with those horses. You know, they were they were running pretty quick. You know. And the other yeah, no, thing, that was a tough spot. That's him. Yeah. Remember the English jockey we're talking about at Fairgrounds? I think is is Ben. Ben um, Curtis. Yes, he he rode the said, horse that I love for the Derby. He ran yeah. second. Yeah, second, but he's he's staying in the states now. He's not going yeah, back to England. Yeah. No. No, and he doesn't no. even look like he's like any kind of spring chicken either. Like, I think he's 34 or something like that, huh? I think. Oh, okay. I thought he was a little old, but yeah, no, I mean, it's pretty neat though. And I love the way he rode that horse in the uh Louisiana Derby. My my Derby horse, Paula, is Honor Marie. Oh, for, uh, <laughs> Whit Beckman. Beckman. You know what? I, I love the horse and I love the trainer, so I'm on your I'm on the same page. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah I don't know anything about the trainer. I just, I know I've read a bit about him, but I love that horse. And if he'd only just won on the weekend, I would have been rich. But anyway, Wit's, Wit's, Wit's been in the game a long time, and he was uh, Owen Hardy's assistant, I think, for like nine years. Okay. Year ago. But he's also got lots of other, you know, like lots of other people he's worked for. Wit's a great guy. He was here in Tampa last year. I okay. Just, I just love Wit, and I'm really rooting for him. Like, really. Yeah, no, the horse ran huge. And, you know, the horse that won the race, Brad Cox's horse, Chasing Freedom, is also, like, very legitimate. And they both sort of moved, made the same move. It's just that, you know, Brad Cox's horse had a little bit of a more, you know, momentum. But you think, I, I agree with you by watching the race. You could tell that Wit's horse could maybe beat it. It's not like it, it's not like it was like a cut and dry like this this horse is much better it was like you know yeah different circumstances something could shift the ship the tide a little yeah yeah mm -hmm. we'll see and um leroy your horse that raced on saturday that uh i bet all sabatini. that money on sabatini mm -hmm. yeah sabatini. Oh. yeah she, uh, she ran well she was third. she ran well yeah. yeah she didn't have the greatest trip she didn't have the greatest trip but you know she came back well she's gonna be home you know, to probably run opening week. So, you know, but she came back well and she's all right. We took her out for the first time this morning and she has a smile on her face. So, which is good. Oh, nice. She's happy. Yeah, that's all right. and she's, yeah, that's I, I all have right. a yeah. question for you guys. When when does uh, the track in Barbados run? We're running Saturday and, and every two weeks. So, it's every two weeks. So, we, then we break in September for a couple months. And then we start back in November, December, and from there onwards. So they run all year, basically, oh, like yeah. one weekend every two weeks. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah every two weeks. We okay, run twice a month. Because I'm about to plan a trip. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but you want to plan a trip? You want to plan a trip in in March, the first weekend in March. Up. That's the, that's, okay, well, that's when I'm gonna do it for next year. Okay, yeah, there you go. There I'm you gonna go. plan for the first weekend in March next year. Yes. All right. Paula, Are you gonna be there? We yes. are all be here. Yes. Paula, if you beat me down there, will you run over to Bubba's and see if my picture's still on the wall? <laughs> 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 they okay. made it took it down because I didn't show up. I stiffed them, but Mike, I had good reason, you Paula. Come with me because I'm definitely going to be there next year, the first week of March. I promise you, and, and that weekend I'll be there. So, are you going to come with me? <laughs> if you're inviting me, I'll go. Absolutely. Oh. This is, we're I'll go. Now. We're a gang now. We and go. I'll get my hair cut, Paula, and I'll put some more makeup on so you don't see the wound. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. We get into that time where it's, it's cool. oh, yeah. oh, the producer's got to run over to Baba. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, before we go though, before we go, um, Paula, you got any tips for the guys that the the your writers coming up? No, no tips. Just uh, 
Maybe they'll be first, second, and third by some craziness. You know? <laughs> see, so, Sean, Sean, I, I, you see, Sean, I'm not the only person that does this, Sean. All right, all right, all I right. Think all right. So I try to ride the horses I think can win the race, but I hate to give tips because I don't know. Okay. Yeah, well, Sean, Leroy's favorite line is, let the horses do the talking. My favorite line, Paul, is let the horses do the talking for you. That, and they yeah. don't like me for that. So that's why I kind of want to see your, your, your thing on it. So anyhow, but well, so, no, but I see Ted Hall. Ted Hall just sent a message to Paul and see Dave in the in the Tampa race office. What's that? What's that? Paul? What's going on? Dove. It says Dove. But I don't oh, think the boy did Dove. That was somebody named Dove. Oh, I love Dove. Everybody loves Dove. Oh, okay. I thought I thought with a miss. I thought he spelled a O oh, instead of an A. But Sean, no. you know you do. Sean, you know you do that all the time, Sean. You thought you Chad Holder had some special codes, did you? <laughs> everybody, yeah. loves, everybody loves Dove. Okay. I, oh, right. I thought you were going to say everybody loves Ted. I was going to debate that one. <laughs> Ned is no on coming on to you. Um, Ned Mike. is too. Ned is too late. Yeah. Ned is too late. Yes. He was Ned watering off for late. Marty. We know Marty won a race today, Ned. Yes, Marty wins a race at Gulfstream every day, so we know that. Uh, they love him in the booth in Gulfstream. That's all they yeah, talk they about. It. When they talk about the Canadians, Marty's name comes up first. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Paula, it was a right. pleasure having you on here, and I'll Thank make you. sure I don't mess. Up. I won't mess up next time to get Antonio on for the next when we next gig. We're gonna try and arrange, make some arrangement, but we have guests for next week already. Let's come back so, with Paula. A week where Paula can come back on and Antonio's coming back on. So we're not going to uh, Does he really? Okay, yeah. we can, we'll squeeze him in late, Paula. Yeah. <laughs> but no, Paula he, it, he needs a whole show by himself. Hey, you tell him I said hello, Paula, and I guarantee he remembers me. He'll remember you. Uh, oh, okay. he will. Again, Paula, right. it was a pleasure having you on here. And Thank you, know you. Me, it, was it was a pleasure. Jen, wonderful. nice to meet you. Sean, nice Thank to meet you, you. Paula. Nice to meet you. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, and on, that, and on that note, Sean. Yes, well, folks, this is Sean Hall, Horse Flex and Journeys. This is the crew, and we are out of here. Out of here. here. Off the bubble. Uh, Journeys is sponsored by the Horsemen's Benevolent and Protective Association of Ontario, which represents thoroughbred owners and trainers and their hardworking employees at Woodbine and Fort Erie racetracks. The HPPA represents horse people's interests in all issues pertaining to thoroughbred racing. The HPPA's goal is for the betterment of racing at all levels, from medical and pension plans to negotiating with government and racetrack operators. Your HBPA is at the forefront of all issues important to members. Please visit the HBPA at hbpa.on.ca or on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you, HBPA Ontario. Away Together is all about enhancing the guest experience from the hotel to exploring everything the destination has to offer. Away Together brings the culture and the history of a location alive to the traveler who is seeking to immerse themselves in a truly authentic local experience while on vacation. The next race day at the Garson Savannah will be the 30th of March. Bring your family and enjoy a day of races!